Hello and welcome back everybody to the iFoster Juice Podcast. I'm your host Juice and I'm here with my co-host, the federal sex trafficking charges to my R. Kelly. Rain, what's going on, Rain? <laughs> Breaking news, everybody, in case y'all didn't know. Oh my god. I wonder if he's gonna finally go to jail. God damn it. You know, it's kind of weird that it happened this week when I don't know if you kept up with that guy, Jeffrey Epstein. Yeah, I see yeah. that too. I've known it's about disgusting. that. I've known about that dude for a while, but I was I'm telling people I'm like he's gonna get off. Don't think he's going to jail. He's gonna get off. Something's gonna happen. But oh yeah, because he knows knows where all the bodies are hidden, right? He and, does, so. and it, he really fucking worries me, man. Like he might be the guy, not just like in Hollywood, not just with rich people, like in everything, politics, fucking. Yeah. You name it. He is like the elite of the elite. Even though there's people rich. Here's the crazy thing about him. Nobody knows how he got his money. Yeah, I was reading about that. He's a billionaire. and Nobody knows how he got his money. People who in Wall Street who, you know, they'll talk about anything. They're like, I've never done business with that guy. I've never heard any good deals that he's done. I don't know what he does. Yeah, dude. I wonder if he might die just all of a sudden. Somebody uh, might murder him. Like. I don't, I don't know. So, some dude. crazy shit. Some crazy shit might happen because they're like, "Fuck it, we'll put a hit out on them." Good people tend to get murdered. It's the bad people that tend to live into their nineties and shit. I don't know, Hillary Clinton. I, I don't know what you're talking about, Rain. Hillary Clinton is <laughs> an awesome woman, and I would never bad mouth her. I know she. <laughs> I know she had nothing to do with anything that that guy did. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> but anyway yeah r kelly he looks like he might be going to jail but just as that guy has connections i think r kelly just has done some good songs and that's enough for him to stay around according to some people dude he's gonna probably get pissed on if he goes to jail <laughs> well well it would serve him right <laughs> who knows maybe that would be a new fetish I hope he does, man. Fuck you, asshole. You like giving it, so now you got to take it. Yep. But, but enough of all this pedophile shit. Let's talk about let's talk about fights. Let's talk about things that are that are not as distasteful. Although some of y'all on MMA Twitter would beg to differ, especially after last weekend. But oh my god, it's so crazy, man. We're, we're gonna we're gonna have we're gonna talk about all that in a second. Uh, we're gonna have a quick little word right now about PFL. Um, um, I don't even know what these are called. PFL four season three. I, I don't. I don't know what they're called. But it just happened. Uh, Kayla Harrison beat some girl that she was expected to beat. Kayla, you will take my last name when we get married. Harrison just beat some poor girl. <laughs> Still number two though. Still number two seed. Oh yeah, that's so funny. We're like both like hoping she would lose, huh? <laughs> And man, <laughs> you know what? It's it's it, as we're gonna talk about in a bit about Van Ashken. I think it's the same thing. It's like she's very talented. I always thought she was talented. She still is, but I don't know. I guess I'm just at the point. I'm already kind of off the hype train, and I just wanted to see how she's gonna deal with loss. And especially that we had one judo Olympian who didn't deal well with loss. Let's see if there's another one because she she won a decision and got upset. So it really makes you stop to wonder, you know. Yeah, it was funny. I'm like, yeah, I just want to check out the results and see how she reacts, and just to see if she has like another meltdown or something. Yeah, I, I didn't, I didn't catch all the fights. I'm gonna have to um, probably do that tomorrow. But I saw a gif, I saw a video of uh, Roy Cooper the third getting knocked out by John Howard of all people. I, I didn't even know they were fighting. I, didn't, I hadn't paid much attention to this card. But yeah, he got, he got murked pretty bad, man. I, especially by John Howard. I know, I know he's a killer. But I just – Roy Cooper seems like the real deal. I did not think he'd get taken out by that guy. Right? I thought he would go all the way. But, yeah, it, it looked really brutal, man. Yeah. And then you showed me right before we went on air, Gina Fabian, who's a favorite of ours. Uh, I, I, it was a gift, so I didn't get to see, like, the full effect of the of the finish. But 
she looked good from that little <laughs> two seconds that I saw. Yeah, I didn't see it either. I just saw the highlights, so I'm going to have to catch up with it tomorrow or something. But good for her. Yay. Yeah, Gina Fabian's awesome. Shout outs to, to New Zealand. Let's talk about the fights we've seen thus far, though. Let's go into our rewind. Let's talk about UFC 239. And, uh, well, we only covered the main card, but I, I wanted to talk about some of the stuff on the undercard. So the first fight was Julia Vila and Penny Kianzad. Um, but did you say you did or didn't see this fight, Rain? No, I didn't see this one. Did you see the highlights? Uh, no. Not really. Well, you know, Julia Vila did Ju- Julia Vila things. She, she, uh, it was kind of impressive because she, yeah, it was a decision, but she dominated Penny. I, I expected her to win. I expected her to probably win a decision, but I thought she'd have some jitters, maybe lose the first round, round and a half, but she was like in it to win it, man. Penny didn't look great, but I think that was more of a thing of Julia than, than a Penny. And then, uh, I, I knew, I thought she was a nurse for some reason. I knew she was some kind of, in, in some kind of medicine or science field. But yeah, I guess she's a geologist or studied geology. But uh, it's funny. She's really smart. She has a lot of personality. She's like really bubbly, but it's, she's also a maniac in the cage. It was just kind of funny to see, especially it was even funnier given that there was an earthquake the past week and she was just like, oh yeah, don't don't worry. Nothing bad's going to happen. <laughs> well, she didn't say nothing bad's going to happen, but she wasn't freaking out about it. It seemed like she was more amused or something. <laughs> she was excited. I'm like, bitch, <laughs> I mean, there's nothing to be excited about. No, I'm kidding though. No, she, yeah, she's super smart. She's pretty and she's entertaining, man. She was on the mic talking about like, yeah, where she studied and she was having like a geogasm because of the earthquake. So like, she's that, cute. It's, it's like that old saying, like it's the quiet ones you got to watch. It's like, I've always had this thing about smart people. They're, they're really interesting people because uh, especially in this realm of sports and uh, fighting some people are just, you know, they let loose. They let their freak flags fly and uh, and shit like this. And it's just funny to see. They're, like, so buttoned up and smart. But then you see them in the cage and they're just animals, you know? Yeah, that's cool. So is this Panny's um, second loss? Well, What's she it? um she lost to Macy Chasson in the tough finale. And she was cut. You know, usually the runner-up still gets a contract, at least one more fight. She was cut. Uh, Panny took this fight on, on short notice. I don't know if you remember that. Uh, she was, I don't know if she had a fight in between, but she wasn't in the UFC. So oh, basically, shit. yeah. So she basically, was still in the UFC. Oh. Technically she wasn't, but now she's 0-2 in the UFC. She took a, I mean, I want to say since she took the final late notice, they'll give her another fight, but I didn't see anything to show that like she's UFC material. And here's something I just found out before the show too. Amanda Cooper got cut. Did you know this? What? Yeah, I saw. Uh, uh, I was on Instagram or something, and I saw a uh, like a, a local promo- promotion in Michigan, and she's on the card. I was like, "Wait, what? Since when did she get cut? I didn't even know this." And I remember her last fight was, a, I think it was that Hannah Cyphers girl. I think it was that 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 Denver card with the uh, Korean Zombie and uh, and Yair. And I remember a lot of people thought she won that fight. I'm like, "Damn, dude, are you really gonna cut her?" It was a loss, but it was like a loss that a lot of people th- thought she should have won. Damn, dude, I had no idea. Yeah, that was that was just a weird aside that I found out moments ago. But yeah, Pan- Panny was cut. I don't know about her future now. What the? Yeah, but Julia looks promising. I hope they give her a good fight, a fun fight next. Um, I don't know, maybe like Betch Cohea. And and I know you have your feelings about her, but that'd be a hell of a fun fight because I don't think she'll. I say this yet. Even the best of the best fighters have fallen into Kohea's game. Weirdly, the one person that didn't was Ronda. So, <laughs> that's weird. Yeah. That's weird. But um, some of the other highlights, that Edmund Shabazian kid, I don't know if you've seen this guy, the guy that trains with Edmund, speaking of Ronda. Yeah. I, I saw Ronda's tweet on it, and I saw some of the highlights on that guy. I guess he's been there since he was a kid. Yeah, which worries me even more. People are like, this is the guy, this is the guy. I'm like, he trains with fucking Edmund. Like, do you not see the red flags? Right. So, like, okay. he, he he does look promising. If he was at ATT or something, I'd be like, damn, dude, he's he might be a champ. But he's with Edmund. I'm like, nope. 
Nope. And he's Armenian too, which I, I mean, I'm saying this, I'm not saying this of any kind of racism. I'm saying this of, especially working with a lot of them and seeing them and being around them for a good part of my life. They are loyal to a fault. That's why I find it funny with Rhonda that she stuck around with Edmund so much. Cause like, man, she might be part Armenian because they do not leave their own, man. <laughs> I, I have a hard time seeing Edmund if they've, especially if they've been against you as a kid, that's going to be a tough thing to do to leave, you know, to leave your coach. Yeah, dude. We'll see what happens, man. That's going to be a, yeah, I'm, I'm keeping, I'm keeping my, my guard high with him. Um, Song Yudong, he knocked the fuck out of Alexander Perez. He got a bonus. He's like the only undercard guy that did, I believe. Um, Arnold Allen beat the shit out of Gilbert Melendez. I mean, I expected Melendez to lose. I didn't think it'd be like that. Melendez is definitely done. That was a yeah. really bad style matchup as it was. Claudia yeah. Gadelia survived, but yeah. uh, I mean, she won the three round fight against Random Marcos, but did not look at all impressive. Uh, she called out Joanna. She wants to fight Joanna again. She just, what did she say? It's like, we hate each other. It's like, damn, yeah. girl, like, leave it alone. Yeah. I know a lot of people still. Do you think she won the first fight? It was very close, but I don't think so. I'd have to watch it again, but I mean, like, get over it, man. <laughs> get over it. With the Rain, you're, a, you're a woman telling another woman to get over it. Yeah, well, <laughs> take the loss and go home. But you know what else she says? She's like, it's not fair that. Um, Andrage? Yeah, Andrage. <laughs> It's just the name escaped me for a minute because Claudia, god damn it. That she has all that power and she can fight in the same division as her. She literally pulled a Kanye West. She quoted a Kanye West song to talk about the champion. Are you fucking crazy? If she can make the weight, what does it fucking matter? Won't you just work out more instead of worrying about other people? Oh, never mind. <laughs> well, here's the thing is like, I think she's just like. I don't know. I don't know what she's thinking. Like, that's something I wouldn't advise her to say. Obviously, Claudia has uh, many weird opinions on many things. But, like, it's just so funny because she's so strong. She was, without a doubt, like, four years ago, you say, who's the strongest girl at straw weight? Everybody and their mother would have said Claudia. Right. That's the best athlete. That's the strongest girl. And then Adraj comes in and is like, look at this, bitch. And just fucked girls up. And, uh, obviously, after what she did at Claudia, she's like, yeah, I just took on the Hulk that she's got to be on something or that there's something going on because this shit isn't fair. It's like, well, how do you think those girls felt? How do you think all those girls that you fought before Andrade felt when you were just taking them down and smothering them? Yeah. Was... Something happened where... Like, yeah, it... <laughs> <laughs> I'm but... sorry. I'm sorry, people. There's there's some uh, laughter here. Inside you're, just gonna, you're just going to have to let us be, but uh, maybe on, one day man. it'll come out. But yeah. huh, something... ever since... Ever since that, man, it's just been all downhill, man. Some things stay behind, you know, when the mics are off. So. <laughs> Claudia, man. She's she crazy. Home. Yeah, she's she crazy. Man. That's all we're going to say. Yep, straight up. <laughs> she's showing it big time now. Oh, God damn it. Like, shut up. You're... I've even you. seen the comments where that article came out, and everybody pretty much was just like, just be quiet and, like, go win something. Your your last fight was trash, which is the random one. So, yeah. It was just funny that as soon as after the fight, she was like, you know, you guys say my cardio is bad. Look, I just went three rounds. I'm not tired. It's like, yeah, but you threw like 10 jabs the whole fight. you know? Right? You did nothing. <laughs> yeah. I mean, props to her for winning without much effort, but it didn't show me anything about her cardio. I've had this debate. This Shout outs to Steven Rivers, WMMA yearbook. Uh, he tells me that she has... I don't think she's saying that she has good cardio, but that it's not as bad as people say. I'm like, maybe, but it's still pretty bad. Like, she still gets like, oh, yeah, but she fights hard. I'm like, that's all well and good, but Andraj fights hard, too, and she doesn't get tired. Joanna fights hard, too, and she doesn't get tired. You know, I don't get it. <laughs> I don't know what I'm missing here. Yeah, I, I don't know. I just, we'll see what happens. Yeah. And yeah, we're moving on to the main card, though, what, what everyone was talking about. So from the bottom up, so the opener was Diego Sanchez versus Michael Chiesa. Sanchez foaming at the mouth, being Diego Sanchez. I don't know. I guess that anti-aging shit didn't work because Chiesa just schooled him. 
God damn, man. It was so sad, him walking out with just one cornerman. Okay, um, I, I don't know if I just wasn't paying enough attention or if I maybe left the room during the the in-between rounds, but I saw some people saying that his cornerman was, like, really unprofessional and that he's was, like, doing nothing. And I, I, did you pay attention to any of this? I, I, that kind of got lost on me. Uh, I was looking at Twitter during that time when, you know, they were going in between rounds. But I guess he he's not an MMA coach or anything. Yeah. He's just, I, like, I, some I, <laughs> coach. It was, it was what, like a fucking, like a, a personal fitness trainer or some shit or what? Yeah, yeah. And Diego had nothing, like no real advice. I it, I don't get it. He's just some voodoo coach and that's it. The way that it struck me as, and obviously it was a very different situation, but the way that people were talking about it, it kind of seemed like the Rachel Osovich situation, you know, with the, in the Paige Van Zandt fight that she literally didn't have a corner. So her family was there. Um, Which is, you know, a really sad, heartbreaking thing, especially given what happened to her with, yeah. with her husband and all that. But it's like, dude, Diego Sanchez, you have, what, 40-something fights? You've been fighting for, like, 20 years, and you just went off and left your camp? Yeah, I don't know. I've heard people say, like, maybe especially that John Jones was fighting on the card, at, well, as well as Holly Holm, that, like, they were getting all the all the attention and the special treatment, which would be expected. You know, they're they're the stars of the show, right? And he probably felt bad because he's the veteran, and they weren't really paying him attention. But it's like, I understand if that's the case. I understand, but it's like, dude, you gotta understand reality. But to just up and leave like that, like, hey man, put your feelings aside and get through this camp, and then just tell him to fuck off afterwards. I don't know. That was really weird. I, I was telling people, people were laughing about like. Oh, you know, he, he's so funny and he's so weird with the anti-aging and his sunglasses and all those crazy shit he's doing. But I'm like, dude, this worries me. Like, I think he might be kind of like, he's always been kooky, but this is striking me as like someone with like possible brain damage, you know? Right. It, that was n- normal to me. <laughs> like... I didn't, I didn't find any of it funny. I, I don't know. Maybe yeah. it's just me, but I'm like, dude, I, I'm like. Someone was saying like, "Oh, this is all funny until why, wait until Kiesa knocks him out or something." I'm like, "I'm not scared of that." I'm like, "He's probably gonna lose," but like, I'm, I'm worried already. This doesn't seem normal, uh-uh. you know. It's, Even it's, for him. Yeah, right. It was extra. I'm like, "Am I watching this?" I'm like, "Okay." And then the decision to just have one cornerman. Like, come on, you have to have teammates, right? You have friends, right? None of those people could have coached you. Or, you know, would have been by your side with this fight. Like, really? Like, you brought this dude with you like that or has you, no business being there? I don't understand that. Or even just, like, one of your jujitsu or kickboxing partners just like, hey, this is the guy that helped me spar. Yeah. Maybe to at least tell you, hey, Diego, you're you're losing, you know, you're leaving your, your chin open again. Hey, maybe you should use the underhook to try and get this. Something, something that at least they've trained with and seen, but... Right. Yeah, I don't know. I didn't pay attention to that guy. I, I what happened in that fight I expected. I just didn't think it would be that prolonged. I thought Diego would have like a good first or third round, make it at least somewhat competitive. I didn't think he would get sunned for yeah. fifteen minutes. Yeah. I mean, God, he's so fucking tough and it just sucks that he took so much damage. Like I wanted whoever that dude was to just throw in the towel. Just stop. Please, like, save him. <laughs> Diego might have killed him, though. He might have fucking bit his neck, too, with how crazy <laughs> he was. I think I tweeted out, like, pray for Diego. Hashtag pray for Diego. Like For real. It, it made me sad. I'm like, oh, my God, dude. I mean, like, thank God he didn't get his fucking, you know, like, the ally Quinta knockout or the Matt Brown knockout or, you know. I mean, even things, like, earlier in his career, like the John Hathaway fight where he just got piece the fuck up for like 15 minutes he's had some bad fights but i mean it could have been worse but yeah it was just i mean kiesa looked hella impressive i know it's diego sanchez and he ain't what it was but he looked better than this and and then in the condit fight i mean maybe you could say that condit's a better fighter than diego and i I think that's a easy argument to make but yeah you know he didn't finish diego and he finished condit but he just looked like in the zone this reminded me a lot of like the the dariush fight you know, him to submit Darius, nobody expected that. Like, damn, is he really on this level? And mm-hmm. say what you want about Diego, he's a very competent grappler, and he made him look like a like an amateur. Right. 
Yeah. Just too tough for his own good, man. And then I guess Dana was just like, oh, yeah, you know, we'll figure it out. We'll see what happens with them next. Like, you want Holly yeah. to, to retire or, like, think about things. You want – we'll talk about it later, of course. Well, you want Luke Rockhold? Yeah, let's get straight into it. I mean, yeah, you know, he has an impressive performance. Sanchez, that sucks. But, yeah, he wants Luke Rockhold to be, retire. And, frankly, I don't think he's said anything wrong. I, I kind of get it. But it was just weird in the context of like, oh, no, Sanchez is cool. But that Rockhold guy, that 33-year-old <laughs> stud athlete, yeah, that dude needs to retire. Right? It's like, hello? Did you not? Yeah. Come on. His last win was what, Mickey Gall? And who else was it? Shit. Uh, some some uh, some British guy. I think his name is Craig White. I think he was a Cage Warriors yeah, uh, like, guy. Yeah. Come on, man. He has too many wars, man. It's been <laughs> too much. But, Yeah. Rockhold. Well, here's the here's the thing. Yeah, about speaking of Rockhold, like he hasn't had too many wars, and you know people just keep saying that he has a glass jaw. I I kind of don't think that that's the case. I really do think his defense is just shit, and um, you can have a a good jaw or not. I mean, if you keeping your hands down and you fight with your chin in the air, I mean, I'm sorry, it's gonna happen. You know, like, I mean, look, look, see, like, like a perfect example, like. Rhonda, you know, she, I get that's probably like the person I think of most when I think of hands down, not good, um, not good striking defense. Uh, she got knocked out by Holly Holm in the second round, but that was like an accumulation. She's just been getting her, her ass beat and her chin finally had enough. First loss, first knockout. And then the Nunes fight, she didn't get knocked out cold. That was more of a merciful stoppage. But I mean, I think it shows that Rhonda has a chin. But it's like if you're gonna fight like that with your hands down and your chin up, well, you're just you're not gonna survive. And Rockhold's fighting big guys who can really hurt you. So, right? I, I think I think it's just the Bisping knockout since he's never knocked anybody out like that. It's like, yeah, but Bisping's a big guy and he knows how to punch. And this guy was acting like an asshole and he got he paid the price. Right. And then Yoel, he Yoel, come on! I mean, dude has missiles for hands. Right, you you work with that dude, and then now Yan, you you're already looking past Yan. You're talking about John Jones, and you know? I think I think another thing with the whole knockout thing is that, and it is true, all his losses have been by knockout. I remember early in his career, his first loss was by knockout. He got slammed, like not like rampage Arona slammed, but he did get slammed pretty hard on his head. And then um, the Vitor knockout. I remember the spinning wheel kick, but that was. Still, oh, yeah. up, Vitor. I mean, we yeah. can get that one. But still, like, it's like, yeah, he has a lot of knockouts, but I don't necessarily think that's a glass jar. It's just he's always had shit defense. He had a good counter right hook, but he really didn't evolve after that. And you think working with someone like Henry Hooft that that would have that that would have fixed some things. But well, I think just his modeling career, he's not all in. You know, I think that takes its toll. Really, I mean, he's going from place to place. He's probably like on some weird diet because he's probably mingling with all these stars or other models and he's probably drinking and eating and doing whatever and then trying to get back in the gym and he's not concentrating on that. Yeah, di- diet, Green, wink, wink, diet. You're, you're saying that he likes a little uh, extra powdered sugar on his French toast or something? <laughs> I don't know. Well, I saw someone tweet, I forget who it was, someone tweeted about, like, oh, the word is that Rockhold is kind of a party animal. I'm like, yeah, I, uh, I believe it. Look at the kid. Yeah. I'd, I'd be fucking snorting coke off of hookers' asses as well if I looked like him. <laughs> but, right? yeah, I mean, I, I don't fault the kid. But, yeah, I mean, if you're trying to fight, I mean, that's the oldest story in the book. The young, talented, rich fighter, you yeah. know, pissing it all away. Yeah, ever since he signed... And I think, was it 2016 with the talent agency like that? Like, it's been a decline. He hasn't been the same. And 2016, well, he won the bell in 2015, technically the end of it. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, the the writing was on the wall. I, yeah, I get what you're saying. But, um, okay, here's the thing. It, it kind of, uh, it's funny because we're going to talk about something else that kind of goes against this. But was it just me? I mean, I don't hate Rockhold's. I, I thought that was a really bad knockout. I mean, obviously it was, but I was really pissed off at Herb Dean in this fight. Why? He was like halfway across the octagon when that shit happened. 
Um, like as soon as he fell, I was like, he's done. And here's the thing that really pissed me off. It, maybe if it would just would have been a knockout like that, uh, if the just knockout would have happened like that, I wouldn't have been mad. But the thing is that really pissed me off was the end of the first round. And he's not the only ref that does this, but it was just it, it really pissed me off how disengaged he was. So Jan Blakovich, you know, he lands a good combo, lands that head kick that that stumbles Luke. Yeah. And when he fell, I was just looking at him and I'm like, he's not there. He's yeah. Like, I'm, I wasn't saying, I'm like, maybe the fight shouldn't be over, but I'm like, Herb needs to talk to him. His corner needs to talk to him. Good fucking luck getting the corner to talk their fighter out of continuing. Herb needs to talk to him. The doctor needs to talk to him. He needs to get somebody to look at him. Like, he's not okay. Oh, yeah. Is he, is he well enough to continue? And Herb is just like, oh, you yeah, know, no, the kick was after the bell, so it's okay. It's okay. It's like, dude. And, and th- you know, we're going to talk about this later with Jermaine Durand and me because she's, you know, in the main event of this week's card. It's like, I don't get this shit with refs and the fucking timer, dude. It's like you're – to me, if you're a ref, you're off, your most important job is to keep the fighter safe. After that, I don't really care what happens, but you caring more about the timer and if the, the, the hit was late, ask him if he's okay. If he can continue, cool. If he can't, then okay. Call time and like, okay, are we stopping this? If he can't continue – we're going to stop it. We're going to look at the replay. Was it illegal? Yes, it was. Disqualify him. Okay, no, it wasn't. Okay, TKO. And that's that. But why are you more worried about the time than you are of seeing this guy who clearly got rocked, who just got, you know, who's about to be forced out in there because his corner, you know, you, we know corners in MMA don't stop fights. And then if you see the beginning of the second round, Luke just goes at him like a madman. He just starts wailing because he's just fighting on instinct. He wasn't there. He was just fighting scared, basically. Yeah, it was bad when he was sitting there with his corner. I don't even think he was sitting on a chair, the stool. No, no, that's the other thing. His corner didn't give him a fucking stool, and yeah. he was just looking up at the light. Like, Henry uh, uh, Hoof was right in front of him and talking to him, and Luke Rockhold was just like a deer in the headlights. Like, what? You could tell he wasn't paying attention. He didn't know where he was, probably. And this guy's just telling him, like, come on, come on, get out there, get out there type shit. Yeah, yeah, it was it was horrible. But <laughs> like if he if he were to get knocked out, hey, that's life. You can't do anything about it. But it's like, yeah. I don't think he should have even been in a position to get knocked out, knocked out like that because that fight probably should have been stopped after the first round. Right. At least give him time, you know, at least talk to him or whatever. If he goes out, it's like, hey, fuck it. He wants to go out. The ref didn't see nothing wrong. The doctor didn't see anything wrong. But they didn't even bother to look. They didn't even bother for a second opinion. Mm-mm. Yeah. That's a good point, man. I didn't even think of it that way. But, yeah, I did notice that, yeah, he wasn't there. No chair, no nothing. They're just trying to rush him out, get him back, in the, get him back into the fight. But he was never there in the first place. Yeah, you're right. You know, and, and I was saying, you know, Jan was a good fighter. I mean, I didn't expect him to start him like that, but I'm not surprised he beat him. That mm-hmm. was just, I don't think he would have knocked him out like that if it, was, if it wasn't for the end of the first, you know? Yeah, so – yeah, that broken jaw. Man, that's now you're making thing. me feel bad, man, because I, I, like, tweeted a smile when he got knocked out. Well, see, that's, you know what's the other thing? I knew his jaw was broken right away. Well, I didn't know, but I, I had a strong suspicion it was. Because I seen even when he fell, when it happened in live action, like, I saw his mouthpiece, and it was kind of weird. I was like, oh, that looks bad. And then when they cut to him after the knockout, when he was trying to get up, he had his mouth open and he was touching his bottom teeth. And I was like, okay, uh, best case scenario, he probably got a tooth knocked out or knocked loose. But the way he has his mouth open, like where it looks like he can't function, I'm like, I think I think he broke his jaw. I don't think he can close his mouth right now. Damn, dude. And I, I don't know if you've ever seen those pictures. That. Yeah, I don't know if you've ever seen pictures of people who've gotten their jaw broken, like their four or five front teeth. They basically like all get like shattered. They all like... It's basically like if you were to get like a like a, a vice grip and like point it down towards your jaw. Like it's really bad. Dude, it's, that's insane. Yeah. So when he was grabbing his teeth, I'm like, I think he's grabbing his teeth to see what's happening because his jaw's broken and he doesn't want to touch his face. Ah, oh, shit, man. I didn't notice. I have to like watch it again. Yeah, I, I noticed all this shit right away because, yeah, um... In about five minutes, you're not going to believe anything about what I'm saying, but I do get really concerned about bad knockouts. Like just in certain instances, I don't, but in this case, I do. <laughs> and I'm not even a big Luke Rockhold fan. That shit's funny. Damn, dude. I kind of feel bad now. 
<laughs> I mean, Luke's Luke's a prick. Trust me. And as I yeah. said, or, as I've said, he's he's the whitest man on earth. He has he's he's vanilla in all the wrong ways. He has no yeah. goddamn personality. But you know, he's just an asshole too, man. Like that dude's a veteran, man. That dude's a veteran. He's been a strike force champion, UFC champion. Yeah. Like he's accomplished, unlike some other people. But um. <laughs> You no, know, he he's had a tough career. I, I I get it, and it's like honestly, this is gonna sound stupid because it's like it, it it sounds facetious, but honestly, it's like dude, he's he's a model. He kind of needs his face, especially right for his profile shots, and he has right. a broken jaw, so he's basically out of a job for who knows how long. Seriously, like, he has a contract with what Ralph Lauren right now? For Ralph Lauren, I think. Yeah. Yeah, like that's not good. <laughs> he's gonna be. Eating out of a straw for a while? Like, mm-hmm. That's not a good look. I was thinking about that, too. I'm like, uh, that's, I don't think that's a good look. And then now you have a broken jaw. And, you know, like, I think a lot of people have, you know, there's, like, that schadenfreude with most normies, you know, with most normal-looking people, seeing a, a really good-looking person like that get their sh- – you know, I see it a lot with women. And guys are the same, too. You know, women, like – you know, I see him a lot with Paige Van Zandt. A lot of girls hate on Paige Van Zandt. It's like, oh, bitch, look. So you get your face cut up, like, in the Rose number Eunice fight, and they kind of take glee in that. And I'm sure a lot of dudes are happy that a, a chiseled job man like Luke Rockhold got his jaw broken. But it's like, damn, dude, he kind of needed that for his other job. So <laughs> <that kinda sucks. laughs> I feel bad for the guy. It sounds weird, but I do. Yeah, that sucks, man. That's yeah, I was, just, I was just happy – that he, you know, he got knocked out because of all the shit talking. He was looking past Jan. And I was like, you kind of deserve it because. Oh, he deserves totally, to lose for sure. Yeah. You're totally looking past him. You, you think you're going to get this title fight with John Jones when you've never even fought in this division yet. You haven't proven yourself yet. You've been knocked out all over the place. You haven't fought in a while consistently. Like, come on, man. You're talking all this shit. And then, yeah. <laughs> Plus you're an asshole. You're an playboy. You're an asshole to ladies. Like when you open your mouth, it just makes me cringe. Now you can't. Sorry. Now you wow. <laughs> sorry. See, I'm so sorry. For, one, for once, I believe you. <laughs> I partially feel bad. Speaking of talking shit and getting knocked out, though, Ben Askren. Oh God. Dude, that was the fight. That was it. That was it for me. I really did not care what would happen after. I, I didn't care. We both said that last week, and um, sure enough, that turned out to be the case with everybody because even if you weren't that excited for this fight, that's all you were talking about afterward. Yeah, it's just amazing fucking knockout. That's just fucking insane, man. The fastest one. And he was practicing that. And... He's the one that came up with the game plan. Smart it, move. Like, he figured it out. I, I really hope that – Um, I mean, it's kind of weird with a guy like Jorge because he's been fighting his whole adult life. I mean, I'm sure he was – at those backyard brawls, I'm sure some of those took place before he was 18 too. I mean, he's basically been fighting his whole life. Uh, and and I, I think he's a smart dude. I know people may not think that since he's like a street guy, but I, I could tell he's a smart dude. But – I really wish he coaches at some point in his life. He he's he's very smart. He thinks things out. He's not what you think of of just him being some wild brawler. Uh, I mean, look at him. You know, you know he's a street dude, and you know that he's got some anger issues. But he doesn't fight like that. Even in this, he had every reason to fight like a maniac again against Askren. And of course, he knocked him out. Of course, he he wanted to hurt him. But he did it, yeah, and in a spectacular way, but also in a very smart way. Um, a lot of people were saying that this was a fluke. I don't know if they're just asking fanboys or they just couldn't comprehend what happened. But I was saying that was the, probably the smartest thing you can do. If you're fighting a guy who can't nor is willing to strike, he's just going to come at you and clinch you and go for a double leg or a single leg or try to hug you with his face up in the air, wide open who's probably going to duck into something. Yeah, it's probably the best thing to throw a flying knee. But he decided to go Usain Bolt across the fucking octagon and dart it into his goddamn face. 
right? I'm like, why? <laughs> it's just shot in. Like, did you see this fucking train coming at you? <laughs> like, what the fuck? And I told people, like, some people were like, I, I actually did for like a good couple hours after the fight in the morning later, the morning after. I was having these debates with these fucking idiots that were like, that was a fluke, that was a fluke. I'm like, look, first of all, I told them what I just said. I'm like, that's a smart move against the wrestler. Second of all, Askren said in one of his interviews before that, that like, oh, what do you think Masvidal's going to do to you? He's like, he's probably going to try and uppercut me or knee me. Like, that's what everybody does. That's what everybody tries to do. So I'm like, what you're saying it's a fluke. How fucking stupid is Askren if he said he's probably going to try and knee me and you still fell for it? God damn it. Fucking. Yeah. I saw and, a lot and, of that shit too. And I didn't want to like insult that. I wasn't trying to be a dick to these people just because they like asking, but it's like, no, seriously, you're saying it's a fluke. Okay, cool. Why? Uh, yeah. He's the one that called it. Obviously, he's not a dumb guy. Why would he fall for it then? Right. That's you know, it's like, obviously, what Masvidal did was smart. He noticed something, you know? He wasn't just trying to hurt him. He obviously did it for a reason. And it just happened to knock him unconscious. So. It worked out. So crazy, dude. I mean, I I enjoyed the the fight, the five second fight. Just the way he is laid out, like I've never seen that before. Like he he almost like seemed like a mannequin to me, because his like leg was mm-hmm. like his leg, his left leg was just like stiff and up. His like left arm was like still like stiff and up. <laughs> and when the ref moved him to see if he was okay like hurt like he was like a mannequin almost i'm like holy shit yeah it was bad yeah it was bad but i still enjoyed it <laughs> <laughs> oh no don't get me wrong i mean i screamed oh you know like joe rogan does oh and immediately after I began to howl with laughter because it was the funniest fucking shit in the world to me and masvidal <laughs> did exactly what i would have done after the fight the whole tapping on the when I talk that shit now and I don't know if I would have done the whole falling stiff as a board thing, but that was funny as hell. Oh my god, dude! I, and then I mean, that's when, and then that's when he lost half of MMA Twitter. Nah, it's just like fuck. What ten percent, five percent? You guys are fucking losers, man. Fuck right? all you people. That was entertaining. To, I mean, I I was laughing when he was doing all that. I was like, hey, you fuck with the wrong one. What, why is it only okay beforehand? You know, and like that's what he said in the post fight press conference like you could say all this shit the lead up of the fight but the minute it's over that that's it like i can't i can't say some shit right go watch soccer man jesus man and the, <laughs> <laughs> and people were kept you know people have kept putting that interview on loop about the whole exactly what you just said like oh my job is to hit him till the referee stops me if you don't like it go watch soccer but i think one of the funniest and most fucked up things he said was a little bit after that um they asked him something about that kind of like it was basically the same question, just kind of re- reworded. And he said, he's like, look, man, I, I had to hit him. I thought he was going to get up. And he basically just like winked at the camera like, hey. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit, man. Like, you sly sack of shit, man. Dude, super necessary. <laughs> yeah. And look, this is what I, I've gone in some tirades. I've told people in DMs. I've texted people. I've gone on this about on on Twitter and stuff. Look, I, I don't I don't hate Conor McGregor and guys like him as much as most people do. I'm not one of these purists that just want you know want it to be fights and for everyone to be respectful. I do like that. But if guys are talking shit, cool. Like DC and Cor- and you know DC and John Jones, they they hate each other and that was always fun because you know they first of all they did actually did hate each other and secondly, you knew that they were going to fight. You knew that that fight was probably not going to be boring. It's different with, you know, Colby and Connor and these guys that it's just for for promotion. Yeah, even the Diaz brothers. I like the Diaz brothers too. And obviously they're real motherfuckers too, but they they do it to hype up the fights too. Jorge is actually a very respectful guy, but he he pissed them off, man. And there's not many people who fight well pissed off. And I think that's what really threw people off. Everyone was banking on not just Askren's wrestling, but the fact that they think that he's a sly smart dude who gets in people's heads and that he was going to be able to fuck with Masvidal. And it's like a dude like Masvidal, man, he wasn't there to play. He wasn't there to, he wasn't there to try to just win. He wanted to prove a point. I'm pretty sure Masvidal would have been 
you know, I, I, I think he would have been cool with losing the fight if he really hurt. Ben, like if he fucked up his ACL and broke his ribs and, and you know, but he lost the fight, he'd have been like, hey, I got mine and I wish I would have won. But hey, I taught that dude a lesson, you know? Yeah. Fucking gangster, dude. I mean, he's had, what, almost 50 fights that we know of. <laughs> right? Plus, like, plus Leon Edwards. Yeah, like, come on, man. He's just, he just loves to fight. You fuck with the wrong one. So, in, enjoy what we have, dude. Like, seriously. this is He's a real one. This is, this is what I was saying in the lead up to the fight, too, man. That immigrant mentality shit. And people always laugh at me, but it's like, dude, this shit is real. Like, this kid is from Cuba. He, you know, I'm sure had a hard childhood at points. Grew up in Miami, which is not much better. You know, did backyard fights with Kimbo for fucking, like, pennies. And this is all he's been doing his whole life. But here comes Askren, this wrestler who's obviously a, a, a good athlete, very accomplished in his own respect. But the thing with Askren is, like, that that's probably the thing that bugged me most. It wasn't even so much the shit talking. He took it as a game. What would he always tell people? I'm a wrestler. I'm going to get my hands on you. I'm going to take you down. There's nothing you can do about it. I'm going to I'm gonna just smother you and, and get a decision. It's so basically what we what do you say. Cool. Mm-hmm. That's fine. You want to you wanna dominate. You're playing it safe. You know, props to you. But you're playing it. You know, you're doing it like if it's a game. And he learned the hard way that it's not. Yeah. And even the promotion. It's like, oh, well, it's all part of the business. It's like, that's all well and good. But you're forgetting that this is a fight. And... Whether this happened on the street or in that cage, the outcome seems like it would have been the same. And you get pissed people off that bad, especially a guy like that. That's what happens. Yep. It's going to happen at Whole Foods. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I do dig finally that, you know, Ben came out and was like, yeah, well, that sucked. He tweeted that out and was just like, yeah, I deserved it. So at least he was a man about it. He was it, was, it was. It's really hard, and I'm I'm saying all this shit because I'm, I I relished in it, and I kind of still do. But all props to Ben. He's a real man. He's 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 a he's as man as it gets. The, the only person I could think that that handled the loss better was Dominic Cruz. That was the other one time that a lot of people hate Dominic Cruz, and after that interview, they're like, "Fuck, how do I hate him now?" You know, after he lost yeah. to Cody Garbrandt, and like that's what this is like to say like. I probably deserved it. It's like, all right, you know, you know what you did. You you now realize that it's not a game. You see the consequence of what you did. Cool. And you don't like Jorge. Cool. Jorge still doesn't like you. You guys don't have to be friends. It's all good. But you now see what's at stake here. All right. You know, people. Yeah. GSP would get a lot of hate. You know, in, in his time because he was boring and quote unquote played it safe. But listen to GSP's interviews. He'd be like, I have to play it safe. Like this is very dangerous. Like he was, he was never fronting about it, you know. It's like I could get seriously hurt in there. I could die in here. Yeah, I'm gonna fight in the way that's safest and best for me. And I was cool with that because it's like, hey man, you're being honest. And and we all know GSP terrified of fighting, never wanted to fight. Guys in the locker room would say that he was like a little kid, you know, looking for his mom of how scared he was. But yeah. he was what undefeated for years, right? One of the best, the best fighter of all time, probably still to this day, in my opinion. Yeah, that's insane, man. Yeah, and <laughs> on a on an ending note, as far as with the Masvidal thing, and I'll give you your time too, Reen. But on an ending note, I just want to say, um, being to a few live UFC events, I know that the, their music selection, the, the ones that I've been, is pretty cool. But it was so dope. Whoever the DJ was, whoever's in charge of that, that as soon as Masvidal won, as soon as he left the cage, the first song they played was Celia Cruz's "La Vida Es Un Carnaval." which is like the Cuban anthem. If there was any Cubans in the crowd, oh my gosh, shit, mother. I, I would, if you would tell me back in time that Jorge was going to win in spectacular fashion, I'd be like, please transport me to a bar in Little Havana. I need to see this with a bunch of crazy fucking Cubans. Huh. Damn, I didn't even know that. That's cool. Yeah, I don't know if you paid attention because, I mean, that was such a, it was so loud and everything. People were still not over. But if you listen to the, to the, to the fight, they were playing Celia Cruz, who's you know a Cuban singer, probably their most famous one. And that song is one of the most famous songs in like Latin music. That's dope, man. Yeah, I wanted a Cuban sandwich the next day <laughs> and iron beer. 
Iron beer is their version of Coca Cola. What is it? Yeah, but it's actually better. What is it called? Iron beer. It's soda? Yeah, it's soda. I've never heard of that. Well, yeah. we're talking about PFL earlier, and I saw that one of their sponsors was Presidente, which I wasn't sure what it was at first. And then I rem- I thought, like, given that it's fighting, it's probably alcohol. And then there's a brandy called Presidente. It's a Mexican brandy, but it had a different logo. So I'm like, oh, I guess they rebranded or whatever. It turns out it's a beer company. And somebody on uh, Twitter informed me uh, when I found this out. They're like, oh, yeah, it's a it's a Dominican beer. It's like one of their most famous beers. I was like, oh. Okay, so cool. I guess they're, I guess they're coming to the states now or something. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, so maybe I need something new to try out. Maybe something I'll get this weekend. Yeah, right. Yeah, I've no, never tried. Did. Yeah, I mean, I've tried German, British, Japanese, surprisingly, Belgian, but I've never tried. Uh, I've never tried Dominican. That'd be interesting. Yeah. You know who actually makes decent beer that you might be surprised? Well, I, I don't know. Maybe you've tried it. Uh, the, the Thais. No, I haven't had theirs. Even though I go to like Thai restaurants or like Vietnamese restaurants, I never really had their beers. Um, I've only tried one. It's called Singa. It has like a I don't know if it's a lion or a dragon. S i n g h a. It's funny because yeah. when you look at it, it looks kind of like bootleg. Right. But it, it's really good. It's really good. You'd be surprised. It tastes like a almost like a European like malty beer. Oh, okay. Really smooth. Yeah, yeah. I could only find it at like. Bevmo and stuff, but it's really good. Gotcha. Okay, I'll keep that in mind. Yeah. I don't know. I've been like feeling like drinking a beer. Oh, it's getting hot. So. Yeah, I think that's why, huh? Okay. Yeah. Ice cold yeah. beer this weekend. Yeah, it'll be nice <laughs> to watch to go with the fight. But uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, moving on, co-main event. So Amanda Nunes, she Holly Holmes, Holly Holmes. I mean, this is. <laughs> Sorry. I mean, <laughs> no. I mean, uh, is this? The only other time I can think of something like this happening is Crow Cop. Dude. You know, Crow Cop, uh, Gonzaga knocking out Crow Cop. Like, I can't think of another time where somebody used their own move. Like, that's wrestling shit, you know? That's WrestleMania, the guys that have been beefing for a year and, you know, Stone Cold gets Stone Cold Stunner type shit, you know, just to fuck with the crowd. Like, yeah. it was amazing. I, I And it's funny because I, I wrote an article. Um, I mean, there's not a lot of reason to read. If you guys want to read it, go ahead. I'm sure you can find it on my Twitter. But I wrote an article about this, and uh, I, I predicted it right. I said first round TKO, uh, uh, Amanda Nunes. So that's this. I think this is the most accurate prediction I've done uh, on paper, anyway. But I mean, I did not expect a head kick, and and that's what I kept looking at when I was doing my study of of the fight. I was like. Amanda's good with kicks, but it's usually just she has a calf kick and a good kick to the body, a teep. But I didn't see a lot of head kicks. And I was like, she doesn't need it against Holly exactly, but if she knows how to throw head kicks, then I'm more confident that she won't get caught with it. Uh, Obviously, you know, she didn't get caught with it and she does know how to throw head kicks, but it was like one of my few worries with Amanda. I'm like, well... If she gets a little overconfident, she stays in a bad range, she could probably get caught, you know? Yeah, it was amazing. Dude, She Holly was afraid to get hit by her again, and she hesitated trying to throw that bullshit oblique kick. God, I hate that fucking kick. Why? It's just, fuck that brutal kick, man. Hurty? Um, yeah, just the knee, like, just damage everything like that. Like, fuck that. You, you know what? I'm not really, like... I'm not saying I've never thrown it, but it's kind of like I kind of would throw it like it's... almost like a feint, you know, kind of like all right, push off, push off. Yeah. Um, but I I I get what you're saying, but I, I don't people forget this. you can get countered with that. That's kind of a tricky move too. Mm-hmm. So I I never felt too comfortable throwing it, but um, yeah, the Hopefully kicks goes wrong. I I thought I thought home was actually doing pretty good. You know, I mean, she she almost got taken down. And she got right back up. She, I thought she was doing yeah. good. But, yeah. like, that last minute of that fight, even before she got knocked out, you started seeing, like, the wheels kind of turning. Yeah. And um, she was afraid to get hit. Well, I mean, even Cyborg got afraid to hit. He yeah. got afraid to get hit with Nunez. You know, I'm, I'm not knocking I'm at, uh, Holly for that. Yeah, man, it's crazy. She got hit with that right, and she's like, oh, shit. Yeah. I that felt should, that one. That shit changes your life. Yep. And then she, Amanda faked 
throw in that right, and then she kind of flinched back. And then that's where she tried to throw that oblique kick, but she she hesitated, and that's where she got like head kicked. So, yeah, I was happy. <laughs> <laughs> Like, sorry, man. Like, she's not on her level. All these title shots after title shots with the losing record. Like, I was hoping she would hang it up, especially with what Dana said. But, no, it seems like she's going to continue. Well, uh, that's the next thing I was going to ask. What do you think about her post? That I'm assuming you read it. Uh, I think it was an Instagram post about. Nah, I didn't read it. Well, read it. Okay. well she was basically said, like, you know, I'm heartbroken. This sucks. I didn't expect to be here. You know, I, I really wanted to win, but life goes on type thing. And um, she just said, yeah, like, uh, I'm I'm happy with what I'm doing. I'm not expecting to stop right now. Uh, and Amanda got a really good kick and props to her. And she said, if you ever want to get, <laughs> she's like, if you ever want to get a, a lip injections, just get kicked in the face. It's cheaper. That shit's funny, man. She's cool, man. I like it. I mean, that's up there with Askren. It's like you can't get any class here, you know. Yeah. And it's and obviously it's not a Holly's first loss, you know. She's been here before, but she never been knocked out in MMA, and this is the first time she's gotten knocked out in years. This one was pretty brutal. It was nowhere near as brutal as her boxing KO. If you guys have not seen that, I would tell you to go see it, but it might give you nightmares. So, I mean, if you hate Holly, knock yourself out, but. If you're a halfway decent human being, you might not want to watch it. Yeah, I mean, I mean, props to her, man. I, I mean, I don't know what else she's going to do at this point. I really wish there was like a money fight for her. I wish there was some kind of way that, well, I, mean, I don't think Ronda would sell tickets right now or anything, but just something, just some kind of name. And, you know, obviously Cyborg's out of the question because she already lost to her. That wasn't that competitive. I don't know what she can do. I wish she just had one or two money fights. So she can get her money and, and go, you know. Her and Kat? You know what? That's a good fight. If Kat wins, obviously that propels her maybe to number one status since especially she beat her before. But if Holly wins, it's like, well, now what? You just took out a somewhat contender mm -hmm. and you're not going to fight Amanda Nunes anytime soon. So maybe she can just take interesting fights at one th like 130. It's kind of like what Nate Diaz is doing right now, you know. He's fighting he's fighting Anthony Pettis. It doesn't do anything for him, but it's a hell of an interesting fight, you know? Then who will she fight? Who would you match her up against? I mean, at, at 35, I think that's the best one is Cat because there's something at stake there. Yeah. At 45, I mean, I, I don't know who's going to be clamoring for Felicia Spencer. Uh, this, this could be an interesting fight, but it's one of those things that, is like, it's only interesting if there's a certain outcome. Uh, Kyosan. Yeah. That's but, interesting. Sarah McMahon? Eh. No? I mean, it'll be interesting. The world-class wrestler versus the world-class boxer. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's a story. Yeah. Something to work on because she hasn't really worked on that a whole bunch. I mean. True. I, I mean, yeah. Yeah, th there's things for her out there. It's just nothing like pay-per-view Holly Holm versus X that you really, really want to see. It's going to be a co-main at best. Maybe a fight night main event or call main event, like nothing that's really get your dick hard kind of thing. Mm, Marion Renault. I mean, they're both up there in eight. Well, she already fought her too, though. Didn't they? Yeah, that was her second fight in the UFC. Oh, okay. Yeah. See, like, just go. I, I think <laughs> I think Cat's the best. I think Cat's the best. Um, I, I would suggest maybe that fight, and then we'll see what happens afterwards. If she loses that fight, I don't see much reason to continue unless you just want to go up to featherweight and see. Hopefully, they sign someone good. I don't know who that person is. I but I guess the other thing is I don't expect her to get cut or get released. Like if she were like, well, go fight Julia Budd. Go, you know, get a fight, get a fight in Bellator, get get another belt or something. But I just, it's not going to happen for her. No, and she just recently signed a six fight contract, so she's stuck. Is she, she Brazilian. Uh, I know, right? I was surprised too. I'm like, you're 37. You, you get six. Anderson months? was what, 39? Wow. It happens. I mean, like, you had a different career prior to that too. Like, do you want all this CTE? Okay. I watched this um, after the fact. I think I watched it on Monday. I didn't see it. Uh, I don't even know if it came out. It was on ESPN Plus that Destined, ESPN Plus Destined. It's a really good show. If you guys haven't seen it. 
I've seen a few of them now. And they had one of, of Holly and Nunez. And I fell for her, man. Especially, obviously, I'd already, the fight had already happened. But I fell for her. She was just like, I often think, you know, what would happen if I lose this fight? Like, who wants to be with a recently divorced 37-year-old with no kids, ex and oh champion? God. You know what I mean? Are you no, fucking no. kidding me, man? Really? Really? What the fuck, man? Sorry. Damn. Sorry. Really? You're going to base your future on that? Well, I, come I on, think, man. No, no, She's no, no, a no. good looking gal. Like, come <laughs> on, man. Who cares if you're divorced? Good for you. Go get you some dick, man. <laughs> Go have fun. Remove the preacher's daughter name from your fucking, you know, like persona or whatever it is. Go, go get wild, girl. You got fucking legs for days, man. People will kill for that shit, girl. Uh uh-uh, uh, we need to talk. <laughs> <laughs> like, seriously. Oh, uh, really? You're really thinking like that? Come on, man. This is not your life. Uh uh-uh. uh. It may have been, but that was just a portion of it. You still have a future, girl. Damn. But that's the also the thing of a life of a fighter, Rain. You know, I mean, she's been doing it her whole adult life. Half of her life has been fighting. And maybe that's where she needs to think about moving to a different camp then. She's been there the entire no, time. No, she'll never do it. I know she won't, but she's been there the entire time. And that's why, I mean, if, may, if she travels now, goes somewhere else, Different scenery. She might not even thinking like you know. She might not even thinking be thinking like this. It's crazy, I mean, man. Shelter. You, you, you Shelter have a life. point. <laughs> you have a point because yeah. I mean, how can you improve? Pla- you can't improve. That's a plateau there. You know. Yeah. What are they going to teach you that they haven't taught you in seventeen years? You know. Yeah, the entire mindset is just just been in this camp. You yeah. see the same people day in and day out. Of course you're going to think like that. Like, who wants to be with somebody like me? And and, th- and to be fair, it wasn't even like, oh, I need to win this fight because, you know, I need a man type thing. It was, I think it was more like it's been rough lately. You know, I've, I've only lost – I've only won, you know, one of my last three, four fights or whatever. Like she was saying, like, yeah, it's been tough, but I'm here and I'm going to make the most of it. Like she wasn't like – Oh, okay. Shitty. Yeah, it, she wasn't like, oh, feel bad for me type shit. It was just like – yeah, those thoughts. She was just being real, you know. Like, yeah, those thoughts creeping in my my head, you know. Oh, that, that dude, thing. really? Yeah. So it was just kind of like her being candid. But I get what you're saying, and I'm glad you're saying it. More of a thing of like, don't beat yourself up instead of like, yeah, you're a dumb bitch type thing, you know. God damn, girl. But, you had a successful boxing career. This isn't working out. Maybe because again, you've been at this camp way too long, and they keep focusing on your striking. Why? How many fights have you had in MMA? And they keep focusing on only that. And you're only a blue belt in BJJ? How long have you been there again? Come on, man. Think about it. If you really want to continue to do this, you may want to leave. And I really hope that she, I mean, I'm I'm still confident that she won't. But I really hope that at least that thought's coming to mind. Because it's one thing when you're 22 years old, you had your first loss against you know, a veteran that you're probably an underdog in and you're like, fuck this camp, you know, and they didn't make me win. So I, I don't really like when fighters do that either. But when you're 37, have trained there for 20 years, that's all you've known. Yeah, I, I you know, yeah. Yeah, I, I get your point. Sorry. And I know... <laughs> like, really? You're learning oblique kicks from John Jones? Come on. Maybe she taught John you... Jones oblique kicks, right? You don't know. No, it, somebody <laughs> said, like, I forgot who it was. She, that's where she learned it from. You were a kickboxer, dude. You kickbox too. You were not only just a boxer, you were a kickboxer, too. Where's your wrestling game? Where's your you, grappling? Yeah, and, it, it, and then, like we said last week, the friendship between, quote-unquote friendship between Holly Holm and John Jones, like, yeah, you, you, you need to get away from that guy, man. <laughs> right? Like, that, that's another thing. Like, they're probably focusing on him way too much. That's how it goes, you know. Because yeah, he is, he is that gym. Yeah, he really is. Oh, he really man. is. All the guys that they had, oh, they were, they were too old. They're faded. Mm-hmm. But and when's the last time you thought? Now that you say, when's the last time you thought of a, hey, this this prospect, this Jackson Wink prospect, this twenty year old all American wrestler? You know, he's gonna be a champ one day. Like shit, like that. I've seen it from AKA. I've seen it at ATT. I've seen it in, you know, uh, uh, Zahabi. 
But yeah, I can't think of the last time I've seen it with Jackson Wink. Mm, I haven't either. And did Michelle recently leave too? I don't think so. No, I don't think so. Okay. I thought I heard somewhere that she may have left too. Her, um, she's been with them for a while too. I would understand her leaving. Well, she's really, really good friends with Holly too. So I think it'd be one of those things like, it's like leaving my family type thing if it was the case with her. But I could see her because, you know, she has family. Her husband was a boxer. Obviously, he knows about fighting. And I think if he tells her something, she would listen. If he told her, like, maybe this isn't the best camp for you, she would probably take it into account, you know? So mm-hmm. that'd be a different one. But no, I don't, I don't think so. Okay. But moving on from that, Holly, I can't speak for Rain. I love you. If you, need some, <laughs> if you need some attention, I'm here for you. All right. But, uh, He'll yeah, rub no your good. legs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But don't get down on yourself, girl. You're you're a white girl in New Mexico. You're some of the craziest people on earth. White white people in the Southwest are fucking insane, man. Why do y'all stay out there? That's you know, the so sun funny. makes you feel, right? God damn it, man. Only, only held the bell for 111 days. Oh, sorry. 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 That kind of <sighs> sounds good now that you think about it. It sounds better than three months. Or four months or whatever. <laughs> but hey, man, she took fights. Hey, at the end of That's the day, true. I'll never, I'll never knock her for that because there's fucking. I want the right fight. You know, she took every fight available to her, and for that, I respect That's, her. that's true. Like Claudia. <clears throat> Sorry. Yeah. Moving on. <laughs> okay. Uh, main event. So John Jones won a split decision, the first one in his career, uh, against Tiago against a one-legged man, and Tiago Santos did. Goddamn everything he could, man. I mean, he did almost everything except die in there. Jesus. He die and win. But, right. uh, Fuck, man. but John Jones was like happy to coast. I, I don't know. I don't know how you can coast in a fight that a guy keeps being aggressive, keeps moving forward, and legitimately has power to, to – I mean, I can understand, like, oh, he can knock me out, so be safe. But you got to throw something, you know? And, yeah, he's in the third round. He started with those leg kicks, started hurting them. And I'm not, I, I've, when I saw the fight, I kind of thought Santos won. I was drunk. Well, I was tipsy, but I was like, okay, I'm, I know I'm not in the best state of mind. I know it's a hard fight to judge, so I need to rewatch it. I rewatched it, and I'm basically of almost the same opinion, except I think where it hangs to me is in the second round. I think, depending on who you gave it to second round, that's who won because I think Santos clearly won the first. I think he also won the fifth. That's kind of debatable, but I think he won the fifth. The second round is where I'm like, I'm not sure. And it's really hard because that's the round where he really got hurt in with his knee. So it's really hard to judge because you're like, you want to give him props for doing so well on one leg. But on the other hand, John Jones did pretty well too. So it's like, that's one of those fights that you can't not watch unbiased because it's like, you have to give, even if you hate Tiago Santos, you have to give him credit for fighting like that. But John Jones was being pretty effective as well. And I think I think the second round is what people really, really need to look at. If you can judge the winner of that round, I'm pretty sure you judge the winner of the fight. Man, that's insane. Well, I picked Santos. And I think last week I said, like, you know, if he plays it smart, like he did with the Yam fight, instead of, you know, doing that Blitzkrieg shit, I think he will fight very well against John Jones unless you give him time and then he'll start reading you because he's a fucking amazing fighter. I didn't see that John Jones. He didn't pull the trigger at all. Do you think it was a thing of him being cautious because he was kind of, you know, anxious because he knew the dude hit hard or do you think I've heard other people say like, Oh, he was trying to put on a show because you know, the Askren knockout, the Nunes knockout, you know, there's been these crazy fights, so he either wanted to force the knockout or he just wanted to prove to himself that, like, oh, I can stand with this guy and he's supposed to be this, you know, legit striker type thing. I think he did feel his power, and so that's why he was, more, was, it was yeah, more cautious. And more cautious. So when Tiago hurt his knee in the first round, I was like, fuck, man. There's no way that he'll be able to put all his power, like, into it. There's no yeah. way, you know. But and he still did well, which is fucking amazing. So I can only imagine how that fight would be if he was completely healthy. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I, th- I think he was hurt before he even came in. He was. There, if you look at it, I looked at the first round closely because that's the one that I think 
even if you're the biggest John Jones fan. I tweeted after that first round, like, where are the marks saying that John Jones won that round? Yeah, nobody nobody replied to me because, I mean, obviously they could have been watching the fight and everything, but it seemed like nobody was like, oh, yeah, he, you know, Tiago won that round. But even in that first round, you know, he was doing really well, but if you looked at his kicks, they were still kind of, like, stiff. Obviously very powerful, but kind of stiff. So, yeah, I think he has something pre pre – something pre-existing and uh for him to tear his knee that bad especially off of a, a missed kick like if john would have hit him with a nasty oblique kick and gone that fucked up i'd have been like well yeah john jones fucked him up but since he missed the kick and he literally when i'm saying that he was on one leg literally it wasn't just a partial tear it wasn't just the acl it was the acl pcl lcl meniscus it was fucking everything and then also people miss this, that he kind of hurt his other knee too, since he was compensating and putting so much weight on it. So he may not ever be the same. Fucking animal, man. I mean, it's amazing to me that he was able to do that and just five rounds of it. And yeah. it was still competitive yeah. with John Jones. Like split decision, dude. That's crazy how close it was. Even, even the first Gustafson fight, which was... I mean, more violent than this one. Obviously, John Jones was got way more hurt in that fight than than in this one. That was a unanimous decision. And even me, and during that fight, I thought John Jones won. And watching the fight all these times, I still think John Jones won. It was close, but I think he won. This one, I'm still not sure. Yeah, I agree, man. I mean, fuck. I tweeted out, I want to see a rematch, but who knows how long it's going to take for him to, you know, Tiago yeah. to come back. Um I heard I, that maybe it was two years, but now it's like maybe 10 to 12 months. Well, we'll see that. Hopefully he gives Tony Ferguson a call and be like, yo, <laughs> how did you come back so soon, man? Like, what was your your remedy in all this? The power of Jesus. I don't know. <laughs> like, smoking weed? What is it? Like, what were you taking? Like, because damn. God, I like... <sighs> 10 to 12 months just to, to get through everything and then, you know, some training involved and whatever. So, yeah, he's going to be out for a while, man, which sucks because we don't know what the landscape's going to look like while he's out. Because I do want to see that fight again, but who knows what's going to happen. It, it pissed me off after the fight that Dana said that, you know, John clearly, you know, I, I wouldn't be surprised if you thought John won, but it's like John clearly won that fight. And if you think that Santos won, you're a fucking idiot and you should stop watching fights type shit. Okay. And um, I mean, I guess that's Dana being Dana, but I was kind of like, come on, dude, don't protect John. Like you don't want to see that rematch because, you know, he's going to get hurt. And then I sobered up and I'm like, oh, yeah, he's hurt. And then I realized like, oh, shit, this isn't like a three month injury. He might not be at fight. You know, he might not be able to fight for a year. You can't wait for a year for a guy to heal up to have another fight, especially when, well, he won, but he still was being carried out of the octagon for some reason. No, it, no disrespect to Jones. I know those leg kicks hurt like a motherfucker. It just seemed kind of lame when the guy that you fought was literally on one leg and he was still walking forward basically yeah. on his own. Yeah, like it was a fucking battle. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, he, no, man, no. <laughs> Props to Santos. I mean, shows how fucking hard he kicks. I mean, hey, yeah. whenever he comes back, no one's going to look forward to fighting Tiago Santos. I mean, I don't think a lot of people did anyway, but now even more so. Yeah. Yeah. It pissed me off, too, that Dana was saying that, like, no, we're not going to do a rematch and blah, blah, blah. Like, okay. That's you protecting your merchandise. Well, th you know, that that's what I thought, too. But I don't know if Dana was maybe thinking ahead. Maybe I'm giving him too much credit of him, like, being too smart of, like, well, this guy's hurt. I shouldn't even talk about a rematch because it's not even going to happen, even if I wanted it to, you know? Don't I mean, give that too much like, credit. <laughs> that, that would seem like a stretch, but I'm like, I don't know. I, I don't, I honestly don't see how you think he was that dominant. Right. I mean, even, even if you think Jones won, like you got to admit it was, it was not a good performance. Hell no, dude. Uh, uh, it was not. But yeah, I think that was just him protecting his merchandise. Hello, he's the one over here that's trying to like turn over a no contest, right? Or loss, right? The Matt yeah. Hamill. Yeah. yeah. He's he's working on that. He doesn't want to look like an ass. Does he does, John Joe's is supposedly the biggest star he has right now. Well, Jorge, I think, just put himself online with that. Yeah. But that's him protecting his merchandise. 
God damn, you're on fire tonight, Rain. <laughs> oh man, this fight, this card got me fired up. Like seriously, I'm like, dude. Yeah, I, I, to be honest, you know, we're gonna end with it right now as far as the fight, the card goes. But yeah, it was the first card in a while that I'm like, damn, MMA on July, you know, seventh was not what it was on July fifth. You know, uh-huh. like it, it it changed with not obviously Masvidal was a big thing, but Nunes. I, I was, you know, I knew she was the GOAT. I didn't think there was any debate. And that's what I wrote in my article. I was like, Nunes is fighting for, vying for, she's fighting for viability. And Nunes is collecting scalps. That's the difference, you know? Right. Um, I, I thought she was the GOAT. Now everybody else does. And if I hear one person say that, one more person say that Valentina Shevchenko is the GOAT because she survived oh, against Nunes. I'm going to fucking elbow you in the spleen, man. Yes. But that's beside the point. I mean, <laughs> it, it became undoubt. you know, for 99% of people, it became clear who the best is. And, um, you know, Irene, I'm just going to let you end here with this card of what we talked about off air about the whole debate about Nunes being the GOAT. I'll just let you share your idea. Yeah, I, I believe she's the best fighter ever. She, it's not, I, I don't even want to put female next to it anymore. She is the best, period. Look at her resume. Look what, look at what she's done. I'm sorry. Especially with the John Jones fight that we just saw. Yeah. No, man. Decision after decision. Amanda's like finishing girls in the first round. Last, the last two besides this one, right? The Holly Holm one. What, less than what? A minute? Uh, well, the Chris, the Chris Cyborg fight. Fifty-one seconds. And then Ronda. Forty-eight. 48? Come on. Yeah. All these champions, all these great fighters. And and she's fighting like I, you know, I know nobody remembers or thinks about it, but like, you know, she fought Raquel Pennington last year. I know people were like, "Well, okay, so what?" The point is, she fought. The you know, say what you want about her. She was the number one contender. She was the rightful contender. Mm-hmm. She beat her ass, you know. Yeah, okay, she didn't knock her out in the first round. Well, Raquel's fucking tough. Yeah. And and also, you know, she wasn't giving her much of a fight, so it was kind of hard to finish. But she finished her in the fifth round, which nobody thought she had a gas tank. Like, even the little victories, quote unquote, are really impressive. And I will say, after the fight, I mean, I know I love women's MMA, and but this is, I'll be honest, this is the first time I, after the fight was finished, after a, a women's fight was finished, I was like, I don't know if we can talk about, continue talking about this as just, clearly she's the best female fighter, but I'm like, I know Ronda in her prime was like number six pound for pound, but come on, that's like the whole promotion thing and all that. Like now it's like, Nunes is in talk. She is easily top five pound for pound fighters. You know, it's it's weird because, you know, with the whole w- women with the men and the pound for pound thing, and it, it gets kind of weird because it implies something kind of odd. But um, as far as the records, like, it's got to be there. Because I, I even think now, like, okay, she, everyone's talking about the Cyborg rematch. Um, if she wins, how much more does it add? I don't right. know how much. And even if she loses, does it take away? I don't think it takes away much. Well, and then if she does win, too, she successfully defended both belts. Yeah, she'll be the first ever. Because, yeah, because DC did that, but he wasn't champ champ when he did that mm-hmm. he defended the heavyweight belt he he relinquished the light heavyweight belt right she should be the only this. one yeah yeah, yeah that's that yep that's true yeah she would be the only one that kept both she didn't have to give it up nothing no we'll see with henry if he comes back when he comes back if he's able to do this too hey but... he wants to fight nunes <laughs> oh my god yeah i saw that what the fuck but yeah, getting back to Amanda, like if she beats Chris again, and th- that's another thing that I'm like, what the fuck? We're we're looking past Felicia Spencer. There's some shit going on right now. Rumors are flying around that that fight might not even happen. Um, I heard that that was bullshit. Okay. I I don't know how viable, you know, I don't know how legit your rumors are, and the one that I heard is, but. Yeah, who, who knows? That also could just mean, A, she's hurt, and we're kind of testing the water, see if she gets better type thing. Oh, God damn it. You never know, you know? Yeah, and like maybe gonna they're going to throw that Amanda fight 
Amanda versus Chris. I'll have she definitely do it. She, didn't, she, didn't, she barely got touched, you know? Yeah, she could do it, but it's like, damn, really? Okay. If they both want to, you know, want to fight each other, I'm, I'm down with it. If, if Amanda wants to fight, cool. Do I really want to see a rematch after she dismantled Chris? Not really. And for those of you who don't know, if you're like a new listener to this podcast and you don't follow Reen on social media the past couple months or years, Reen is a diehard cyborg fan. But she's also easily the most reasonable I've met because y'all cyborg fans are crazy. But, <laughs> uh, Trust, you know, when I first met you, I'm like, oh, man, she's going to kick my ass with some of the shit I've said about Cyborg. But nah, you've always been cool about it. And I always respected you for that because I'm like, man, name name the fighter. I've seen diehard Cain Velasquez fans, diehard Junior Dos Santos fans, Overing fans, Conor McGregor fans. Whatever. And you say the slightest thing, but I was like, what motherfucker? And it's like threatened to unfriend you and block you and fucking start crying and want to beat you up and shit. And you've never even been remotely a dick about that and that that's cool yeah i'm just a purist right i mean like come on she she fucked her up man she knocked her out yeah nobody does that to chris i had chris winning that fight i picked her Mm -hmm. i'm like fuck no there's no way she's gonna move up to 145 and beat her holy fuck she fucking killed her dude and even me who i I always i'm like well she this girl has a chance and i gave Luna's a chance too, but I'm like, nah, Cyborg's still gonna win. Like, it might be a decision, it might be a late knockout, but she's gonna win and prove me wrong. Right? After that fight, I was like, I- I'm on board this Amanda train, man. I'm good. All right. I got it. I get it. <laughs> ATT, I talked shit about you before because I was a Black Zillion fan. So, nah, man, that, that's a that's... fucking legit. Fucking Mike, Jim. Mike Brown's coach of the year, without a doubt. Jorge yeah. Masvidal, Amanda Nunes. Tiago Santos was in ATT too. I didn't even know that since. Yeah. I didn't even know that till he actually fought uh, Jones, Jones and saw them in the corner. But I mean, I know he lost, but Jesus, I mean, that's the best fight. That's the worst fight that Jones had in maybe ever. So even for that, that's a moral victory right there, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So Jesus. What, yeah, what a card. Right. We've gone yeah. over an hour talking about this shit already, but I don't, we didn't even talk about like what happened between like MMA, like Twitter fans and shit. Like MMA Twitter fans are busy arguing about two fucking fake dog accounts. I don't got a lot of time for them right now. To the point <laughs> where MMA Twitter is not even involved in the tweet of the week that's going to be announced later. So sorry, I'm a little upset with you guys. Between Askren apologist and fucking fake right? dog accounts, go fuck yourself. I don't care. It was wild, man. And it ended with fucking fighting about catfish and like some broad catfishing and this dog account. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck? If you ain't been catfish, you ain't lived in the 21st century. Get the fuck over it. <laughs> right? We've all been catfished and we've all ate ass at one point, it seems like. So <laughs> get over it. Moving on, though. That's a great segue. Let's get, <laughs> let's get straight into the preview for this week. Let's talk about UFC Sacramento. Yeah, yeah, so UFC Sacramento happening Saturday, Golden One Center. Green, this is like two miles from your house. Come on. Oh, oh it is? It is. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> I forgot this was coming up. Now that I really looked at it, it does look fun. Yeah, I hadn't looked at it at all. I All I knew was the main and co-main. And we're not even really going to talk about the co-main because when I looked at the card, there's a lot of meat here. Yeah, there's a lot to dig into. So let's get into it. So the first one we're going to cover is from the undercard. Brianna Van Buren is coming in on late notice. She's going to fight Olivia Hanata Souza. Um, Brianna Van Buren won the the Phoenix Rising tournament in Invicta a few months ago. She beat three, yes, three women in one night. Finished two of them. Uh, great performance. Great performance by her. She's going to fight Olivia Hanata Souza, who was an Invicta strawweight champion. Uh, had a good run there as well and has been pretty impressive in her UFC day, in her UFC run as of late. Van Buren's a great wrestler. Souza's an amazing jiu-jitsu fighter, jiu-jitsu grappler. Um, I think this is kind of a coin toss. I, I know. I'm looking at it like, this is pretty even, man. But I'm going to go with 
the hometown favorite. Well, she's not from Sacramento. She's from Gilroy. But she's, I guess she oh, still Norco. has family up here. Norco. Yeah. Yeah, she has family up here. She used to live up here at one point. So I'm going with Brianna the Bull. And um, I like Brianna a lot. Well, I'll just say this about Brianna. Uh, if you guys haven't seen her, she's uh, it's not just the accolades of her winning that tournament. It's really interesting, really crazy thing she did. But uh, she's also really exciting. She sounds like, you know, she's a wrestler, so you may not get that impression, but she's really exciting. Uh, a lot of personality. She's really pretty too. She's a uh, quote unquote marketable. Yeah, I mean, I think she has a lot of potential. But Livia is is uh, you know she's a gangster man. She calls and she says that of herself. She she's a uh, she's a G. And um, given her experience, given that Brianna's gonna take her to the floor, uh, I I think she's very talented. I I kind of don't think that she'll get submitted. I think she's smart enough and aware enough to avoid some stuff. And just in that, that's kind of a victory. But I think her her uh, dominance on the floor, how uh, how versatile Olivia Hanata Souza is, I think she'll take the win. So I'm going with Olivia here. Uh, next fight, though. This is one of the weirdest fights I've, I can think of, uh, but it's also one of the most interesting ones. Ryan Hall is taking on Darren Elkins. It also just kind of weirds me out. You have a guy with uh, what is it called? He, what? well, Ryan Hall. Uh, people forget he twitches. Oh, uh, yeah. Yes, Tourette. Right. Yes, Tourette. There you go. I yeah. forgot the name of it. Yes, Tourette. And Elkins. Well, he has a tattoo on his chest that says the damage and it looks god awful. So it makes me think about his brain health. But, <laughs> but uh, yeah, the fight's happening. And Ryan Hall is a weird motherfucker. Uh, Goddamn wizard. But yeah, he's also amazing on the ground. And he's a hairy motherfucker too, which I get props to because you don't see enough of that in MMA. Um, <laughs> Darren Elkins, as I've said time and time again, Darren Elkins is America. You know, I know people have gone on the show. People might think that I'm one of those anti-American people that, that dude, Darren Elkins is America. He's fucking ugly. He's mean as shit. And he's one of those guys that you never want to fight again. So I may have my criticisms, but Darren Elkins, I, I, every time I see him, like when he knocked out Mirsad Bektic and that, that scream and him like basically crying, that shit was amazing. But then him holding the American flag and she just, just that picture was like, damn, dude, I'm like a proud American for one of the rare times in my life. Like, damn, dude, that, that's my guy right there. It's my boy right there. Um, but yeah, just a, just a mean ass motherfucker. Good, you know, good, mean wrestling, but. Who the? How does he want to take hold of the? I mean, does this stay standing, Reen? It might, because Ryan does surprise us from time to time. But I think he's just going to take it to the ground. It might be like a quick work. You think Hall can submit him? Yeah, I think so. Why would you want to keep standing with Elkins? He's an animal. I think the game plan would be to to take him down. We got to we got to remember too, Ryan Hall. One tough by beating the goat Artem Lobov, so yeah, <laughs> um, yeah, I, I like Hall, but I'm gonna go with Elkins. I, I think his his striking's you know slow. It's it's not that technical, but he does hit hard. Yeah, so I think he can do something. I want to go with Hall. I just feel like he's gonna get it done quickly and and just try to avoid all that damage. Pun intended. Yeah. <laughs> Nice. Yeah, I'm going. I'm going Elkin. So some dissension there. Um, next fight. This is the well. I think there's also another one, but this is the one that I remember. There's at least three women's fights on this card, uh, and this is another one. Juliana Pena is back against Nico Montano, who's also back. So I don't know. There's a there's a lot of oppression going on here. You know, Venezuelan. They're not having a good time right now. The the Navajo. You know. Took the girl's belt away, you know. They they framed her for that fucking that drug test and shit. Man, I clearly have a bias for Montano, and I have a bias against Pena too. Sorry, Pena. I, I know you were there at the combat. I, I, I've seen Pena once. She she scares me. <laughs> uh, I don't know, but um, this this fight is really just so tough to call because they've been out so long. They fight so similarly. Um, but Nico's been training, I think, and 
she has, but she's also going up in weight. And Benya's already yeah. a big 135er. But at the same time, Benya was, you know, she she put her shit on hold because she was being a mom. Mm-hmm. So, you know, so she had to obviously lose a lot of weight, get back in shape. That's not easy. And she's taking that short notice. So, oh, God. All right. I'm going to try and be somewhat logical here. I love Montano, but I'm going to go with Pena. I just think she's a little too big. I think she's just kind of going to like out muscle her. I'm just going to go opposite for shits and giggles. I'm hoping Nico would win, will win this one. She needs it. Yeah, with everything that she's been through. So, and just, you know, Pena being out for so long. And I don't know. She didn't hurt. It's just seemed like that Valentina fight like shook her, man. She wasn't expecting that. What do you mean? When she got oh, armbarred by Oh Pena. Oh, I thought you were talking about Montano. I'm like, well, uh-uh. it, I'm like, I don't think she was <laughs> it, there's people to this day that still think Montano was scared of Shevchenko. Like Oh God. You gotta remember this is Shevchenko pre head kick. I understand if women are scared of her now, nobody was scared of her back then. Especially yeah. this fucking Navajo warrior, man. <laughs> but no, yeah, I was talking about Pena with how she got submitted like that. Because she she wanted to submit her. Well, yeah, that's the thing with Pena. Like, you know, I'm picking her because I think she's too big and strong. And I think that's what she did going into that fight. Like, well, I'm way stronger and bigger than this girl. Yeah. I'm just, you know, a muscler. And she did that for a bit. And then technique took over. And then, yeah. She had Valentina (laughs) submit her, though. Valentina's, you know. Yeah, she's a, yeah. She is well-rounded, though. She is, yeah. And and Pena always was kind of iffy on the floor as far as, like, defense because she was always kind of wild. So that's why that, that, yeah, obviously she's one of my favorite fighters, but that's why that Kat Tagana fight drove me crazy because I'm like, Kat, stop being so fucking crazy. You could when you could beat her, but she just wanted to be all, like, she just wanted to show off, basically, at a costume. Like, god damn it, you could have had that fight in the bag easily. I did not like that fight. Damn. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Bringing back bad memories. <sighs> anyway, so that was that. Back. Yeah, Nico, I'm going Pena, begrudgingly. Uh, next fight, uh, Shaman Marias is fighting Andre Feely. Um... This is another it, one. It is Andre, right? I don't know why I'm like blanking on his names. I feel like, yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, Andre Feely. Um, who was Feely's last fight? It was a he had an impressive fight. Damn it! How did I? I thought I'd remember it off the top of my head, but no, Miles, I know Shaman. Shaman Marais fought. Oh, that's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that was a good fight. And then Marais fought Yusuf. That was, those yeah. were very interesting and kind of similar fights. They were kind of both back and forth. Mm-hmm. Um. You know, both kind of, you know, largely striking fights. Yeah, this is going to be fun, man. Um, who are you going for? I'll, I'll base it off that, I guess. <laughs> I mean, I think this is, yeah, evenly matched. It's going to be a fun fight, but I'm going with Shaman. I'm not going with the hometown. Sorry. I, I think this might be like a split decision. The other thing is going to be one of those where, like, you hit one, you know, you throw one, I throw one. Yeah. You land one, I land two. You know, it's just going to be tit for tat, and it's going to be hard to judge. Yeah, I think it's going to be a split decision, and if it is, I'll go with the hometown boy. I'll go with Feely. I have I have no confidence in it, though. No confidence. I think I think that's fight of the night, though, like for sure. Yeah. For sure. Wild. Yep. Next fight, Mer- uh, Mursad Bektic versus Josh Emmett. Dude, it's another one. Okay, so Bektic's last fight was against Llamas. I, I saw that fight, but for the life of me, I can't remember it. Like, I know a lot of people thought Llamas may have won some rounds or may have won the fight, but I don't remember enough to tell you. I guess I wasn't that impressed with Bektic, and he's fought a lot of injuries and stuff too, so there's that. And then Josh Emmett didn't look good against Michael Johnson at all, but then he fucking killed him. <laughs> right? Just let him hit you and you're done for, man. Just clear a shot. His hands, dude. It's crazy. I'm I'm not wrong, right? That that was that was his first fight since the uh-huh. Jeremy Stevens fight, right? Uh-huh. I had Johnson. I picked Johnson to to win this one. Yeah, to win that last fight, but no. He came out of nowhere and killed him. So obviously um, that Stevens fight didn't affect him at all. He's a madman. Yeah, I'm gonna go again with no confidence. I'm gonna go with Bektich. 
just because I haven't seen enough of a Met, uh, Emmett's wrestling or wrestling defense. So I, especially with Beck to just, you know, that, that uh, Darren Elkins fight sticks out. I don't know how good his chin is, but, you know, obviously Emmett can put him to sleep, but I don't know how good his wrestling is. I know he's a team alpha male. I'm sure it's good, his wrestling defense at the least, but I don't want to speculate. I, I want to see it first. So well, I'm going to go with Beck Ditch. I'm going with Emmett, actually, for this one. <laughs> the hometown guy. Is he from yeah. Sacramento? Yeah, he's at alpha male. No, no, but, like, did he grow up there? Because it seems like a lot so. of the alpha males do, but. No, I don't think, yeah, I don't think Emmett is from there. Hmm. Okay. So the Coleman events favor and Simone, and we're not really gonna do an analysis. I'm just like, I don't even want to say who do you think's gonna win here. I'm just, I just want to ask one question: Do you think Uriah can win? Yes. I'm only saying that because I'm back in the gym again. <laughs> fair enough. Um, <laughs> but fair enough. So, so sometimes he visits the gym. So. <laughs> like, I'll say that. It's been too goddamn long. I don't know. Even a guillotine, I don't think. And Simone does get wild. I can see him getting caught in it, but it's been a while. Dude. It's been a while. I don't have any kind of confidence. 40 years old. He's been, what, out since it's two years? Oh, no, it'll be two years. In two, two and a half. Yeah, it'll be a year and a half or something right now. Yeah. It's been a while. He's up there in age. I don't even know why he's coming back, honestly. Why? Well, remember we? I think we talked about it when it was first announced that he wanted like some money for like oh, investment, yeah, that's right. basically. That's right. And he's a new dad too. I mean, it's one of those things that he probably had decent money to take care of himself, but you know he has family now, so he probably hadn't considered that. So, I mean, I'm not mad at him. I just hope he doesn't get seriously hurt. And Simone's no joke. Yeah. Props I... to him for not taking an easy fight, but damn. For real, man. I had when he fought Yaya. I had Yaya. I picked Yaya in that one. And yeah, he fucked him up. He yeah. fucked him up real good. That was a wild fight. So yeah, I mean, I see Ricky like winning this one. I'm sorry, man. <laughs> it's all right. Fair enough. So let's get into the main main event: Aspen Lad versus Jermaine Durand. Me five rounds. Aspen Lad had an incredible fight against the Jar Eubanks a few months ago. And a lot of people thought Eubanks may have won, but Ladd ended up, you know, coming out the victor. Uh, it was not easy. She, I think she was, like, on the verge of tears after the fight. I don't know if it was out of – I doubt it was pain, but I think it was just frustration. I don't think she expected it to be that tough. But props to her, man. I, I, I You know me. I've been talking mad shit about Ladd for a while now. Still a little mad about that Leslie Smith thing. But, man, that fight showed me that girl's got heart. And I wasn't expecting that, especially her being so young, especially fighting in basically a like pure st- boxing match. Um, but Jermaine Durand, Jermaine Durand to me is she's Jermaine Durand to me, man. She's she's about as high level as you could get in women's MMA for striking. Um, I'm gonna go with Jermaine. Yeah, I have her down too. <laughs> This isn't even me trying to be biased against Lad. I, I I really was very very impressed with the Sajara fight, and I it may be the best women's fight this year. I'm just hard to think of a better one. Uh, but I mean, I I don't think she's gonna grow that much. And I know she took down Avenger and beat her face in, and her wrestling's no joke. But Jermaine's a big girl too. I don't think it's gonna be that easy to take her down. And she just beat Pennington in her last fight. I know Pennington's had a rough go, but she's not a bad wrestler, and she couldn't do anything against her. And then you got to remember, Jermaine's got a nasty clinch, mm-hmm. and that can be a good neutralizing weapon versus a a grappler like like Lad, especially if you can start taking the you know throwing those knees to the gut and to the face. She might get knocked out, dude. She very well could. Yeah, she very well could. Yeah. She's so young. I don't know. If it it would suck to again. see. Yeah. As much as I was hating on her, like, I, I, if she loses the decision, fuck it. But right. she gets brutally knocked out, I'm be like, damn. And she's never she's never fought five rounds. Ask the lad. No, I that's, that's another reason of why I'm picking her. It's like, I, I don't have faith in her with yeah. that. Jermaine's been there. Yeah. Too many uh, fights, man. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's been 
Oh, well, it hasn't been that long. I guess seven months, eight months since your last fight. I mean, there's been many injuries or anything like that, but uh, yeah, yeah. Chiara's fucking like knocking out dudes in her gym. Yeah, I still didn't want to fight Cyborg, and that is really weird. I mean, I am I'm not happy about that. I don't know why people hate on her as much. Like, hey, they stripped her belt. Fuck it. She did what she wanted. I, I don't know. I don't know what to say about that. But she's still a legit striker, and most girls do not want to stand with her. So people got to. I heard otherwise that she had other obligations, and that was just the story. Hmm. Yeah. Well, she is a cop. I mean, it's not like this is her only job, but. Yeah. Yeah, she who was, knows? She was injured. Yeah. And she had other obligations. So. Hmm. And this is somebody that trained with her. Oh, okay. Well, a little outside scoop, so. Okay. But, uh, yeah, so we're both going Jermaine on that one. All right. I think, that's the, I think that's the only one we've agreed on thus far. Yeah. That's how good I, the start I, is. Yeah, I like GDR. It's just. It, it's This is a card. It's just it's not a lot of names, but the fights are just like, damn, every fight, it's tough to call. Yeah. It's pretty cool, man. Yeah. I'm still not going to it, though. <laughs> Damn you. Hey, man, it's just too much going downtown to the Golden Ones. I know. I, know, I, know. I might go to weigh-ins. We'll see. It's It starts at 4, I think. If it does, keep it locked on the Twitter and Instagram. We'll, you know, the account will probably have something up. But yeah. I'll okay. be retweeting stuff, too, if, if it comes down to that. So keep yeah. it locked. Okay. <laughs> um, so that's the UFC. We're gonna have a little word about one. One's having a champ- uh, a fight this week. I don't remember the name. I don't look up one's names because just put some goddamn numbers. In. I guess it's it'd be confusing to be like one fourteen. You know what I mean? Like the event fourteen. So I guess I understand why they put titles to it. Gotcha. But yeah. I never thought about it, but I'm like, oh yeah, their their <laughs> name is a number. That's not good. But uh, yeah, Angela Lee's fighting. Uh, I, I, have you seen the? Do you know her, Reen? I know you know Jiu Jitsu. Uh, what's her name? Michelle Nicolini? No, I don't know her. I was she, reading about it. Apparently, she's like an eight time Jiu Jitsu champion. Like, she's one of the most, like, she, I guess she's up there with like Gabby Garcia and Mackenzie Dern as like one of the best like Jiu Jitsu girls in the sport. Yeah. So that's going to be interesting given that Angela Lee likes to likes to uh grapple you know she's has her work cut out for her and she just lost that last fight mm-hmm. granted against a striker who was much bigger than her but still that maybe who knows if she's recovered mentally physically whatnot yeah that was a go- a tough go yeah yeah that was kind of tough to watch too yeah mm-hmm. um janet todd is having a kickboxing fight you guys, don't know, you guys don't know janet todd you need to get acquainted with this girl's legit God damn. One of the best um, American females in kickboxing, especially in Muay Thai. God, her elbows, man. Yeah. Fuck. She, she's one of those, like, technical to a fault almost, you know? Yeah, she scares me, man. And then uh, uh, Giorgio Petrosian, I cannot say this guy's name. Pechma. It's, and I'm sorry, I'm not <laughs> I'm not good with the Thai names. I know a lot of Thais are named Petch, so I'm just going to call them Petch. There's a rematch, and it's really it's really fishy. It's really weird. There's a rematch because the first fight, Petch won, but one said, fuck you, we didn't like that decision, and called it a no contest. It's some really, really weird shit. I guess they thought it was too much clinching, and Petch took some borderline illegal hits. So they decided to call it a no contest. So was it a kickboxing match or a Muay Thai? It was kickboxing because they were having a kickboxing oh. tournament. That's when uh, okay. Andy Sauer, Nikki Holskin, uh, Jotun Clyde, they had a lot of a lot of fighters gotcha. in that. And it was kickboxing, yeah. Yeah, so the, that's where the whole clinching thing, like obviously if this was Muay Thai, it wouldn't have been an issue. But Right, okay. Now I get you. And Petrosian is a kickboxer. I don't. I don't know. I don't think he's had many Muay Thai fights, if any. Obviously, Petch is Thai, so that's his thing. But I loved Muay Thai, but it, it is always really tough to uh, to see Thai fighters in Dutch style rules because, goddamn, they love to break the rules. So, yep. <laughs> and I understand. I mean, it's yeah. in their nature, but it's like, dude, you 
if they say you can't clinch, you need to learn how to box. I love Muay <laughs> Thai, but a lot of them don't know how to box, and it re- really frustrates me. So that's why I do like Yotzenkai. I, I didn't appreciate as much when I first got into sport, but Yotzenkai is amazing because he can do both. He's just as good at Muay Thai as he is at kickboxing. So that's why he's one of the one of the best around right now. But um, yeah, that's happening this week. So keep an eye out for that. Uh, Bellator 224 is happening. Uh, some some good uh, women's fights. On, well, the main event is Julia Budd and Olga Rubin, which I'm not a Julia Budd fan, so I don't really care. But, <laughs> but you know, that that's that. But it, uh, Olga, it's just there's not much to get hyped up about there. I'm not going to pretend like there is. But Leslie Smith is fighting, and there is a lot to get hyped up there because she's fighting at featherweight. Yay. Um, I don't know how she's going to make the weight, but I guess she can. She's going to be fighting Sinead Cavanaugh, who's a, a SBG girl. Uh, I guess she has some boxing background, but I haven't seen much of it. To, I don't know. It doesn't really impress me. That's interesting. Uh, SBG versus the Scrap Pack? She's still there. Yeah, I never know with Leslie. She's still training with all them. Yeah, yep. that's nice. So they, there's a little rivalry there then. Yeah, that'd be cool. cool. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Leslie, is she's an animal in the cage. Or she's one of the nicest people outside of it. Plus, she'll kick you in the balls if you if you grab her girl's ass. She's a, she's a fucking animal. I don't know if you guys remember that, but some girl was a, got, a, I guess, for lack of a better term, sexually assaulted in front of her. And uh, she, uh, she took it to him, fucking ran and kicked him, that dude in the balls and beat his ass. <laughs> Good for her. I did yeah. not know that. Yeah, this was years <laughs> ago. I think this was after the Jessica I fight. It was like when she was new in the UFC. Oh shit! Uh, I, I think I think it was um, what's her name? She's a fighter too. God damn it! Starts with an H. She's a photographer. She was on Tough. Oh my god, her name escapes me. She was fighting Victor lately. I don't remember, but they were training together. I don't know. They were together, and then they were out somewhere. Some guy grabbed her ass. Leslie confronted him, ran, kicked him in the balls, and choked him or beat his ass or something. So, yeah. Nice. Yeah. Um, and another fight, Ar- Arlene Blanco is fighting Amanda Bell. That should be uh, that should be fun. Those girls come to scrap. So these are all, like, prelim fights, too. So. Oh, shit. Yeah, so you got to tune in early. The zone always has them. So if you got the zone, tune in. So keep an eye out for that. But uh, let's get into the headlines. First up, John Lineker signed with one. We were just talking about one. Um, how quick until they book him and DJ? Dude, that's insane. That's That was quick. Come on. Who's going to pass up on that guy? That, that's true. I thought this he would be, probably go to Combate or something, but damn, he's going to go all the way out there. Cool, man. This is the equivalent of Holly Holm being single. Guys, you're lining up. <laughs> Keep your head up, bro. We don't huh. forget about you. But, uh, <laughs> He doesn't have to worry about weight cutting and shit. Good for him, man. Wouldn't that be funny if in one of all places he misses weight? Oh, my fucking God, dude. Please don't. Don't, don't, put, it, don't please. put it past him. Don't please. put it past Shatri. Don't do it. Don't do it. Why you got to jinx him? <laughs> it's not me jinxing him. It's one. I don't trust them. God damn, they have some good fights, but God damn, they're fishy as hell. I, man, I hope they don't do that to him. Come on, man. Hey, look how they did Eddie Alvarez. Look how they did... Almost did DJ. That's true. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. They're not kind to the well, he's not even American, but yeah. He's from the West and that's that's bad enough. Yeah, his his name is <laughs> his name is American. Weird. Yeah. Another news, Mickey Gall. I, I I didn't even write anything down. I didn't even look at the notes. Mickey Gall has another UFC fight, and that's basically all I wanted to talk about. Um, a lot of people are saying that he's not UFC caliber, and I don't really disagree with that. Um, I'm not even really mad that he has another UFC fight. It's just weird that they're keeping him on when, you know, as we talked about earlier, Amanda Cooper's cut. Obviously, Sage Northcutt got cut not that long ago. I don't see what the incentive is to keep him. I don't either. Is he under contract? Is that why? Well, I mean, clearly he's under contract, but the contract also states we can cut you whenever the fuck we want. That's true. I don't get it. 
He's not that good looking. It's not it's not the looks. Maybe they just think that the CM Punk thing really did get a lot of attention <laughs> and people are just no seriously, and they're like, Oh, well, that's the guy that beat CM Punk. Yeah. And he got well, that notoriety, you know. And then New Work, isn't he from up there anyway? She she's from New Jersey, but he wasn't he training with Schilling? Wasn't he training yeah. here in LA? I know Eve Edwards. Yeah, I was training with him too. I, I don't even know if he ever just a coach or just a personality now, but I know Eve Edwards just talked very well about him. It might just be for ticket sales because it's you know it's in New Jersey, so maybe that's the only reason why he's on this and they needed a body because he's subbing in for somebody, right? I, I like I said, I didn't even look. I don't even I, I I saw the guy's name and I don't recognize him, so I'm like, is this a newcomer? I I don't know. I don't uh-huh. know. If this is a gimme. I don't know if they. I don't know. I don't know if they're just giving them fights just because. I don't know. <laughs> but do, do you think, I mean, people keep saying he needs to go to the regional, he needs to go back to, like, LFA or something like that. Like, what, what do you think? Yeah. I mean, he talked all that shit, and Diego fucked him up, so. Was he talking shit about Diego? Yeah. I forgot what it was, but. Something corny, I'm sure. Yeah, he was going to, like, make his mark on him. and. Oh, oh okay. I want to yeah, yeah. Because, yeah. you know, Diego's a name, and da 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 yeah. yeah. Oh, that's that. Next up, uh, Chad Mendez is assigned to stay retired. Um, I think it's kind of funny because it's like, well, this isn't really news. He said he retired afterwards, but uh, I, I thought it was worth mentioning because I don't remember the last time a fighter was like, yeah, I'm good. You know what I mean? Like, I've heard them say that, but it's usually like, oh, yeah, he wrote a book. And it's like, oh, by the way, do you want to fight again? Like, oh, no, I'm good. He just came out and said, like, you know what? It's been a few months. I reflected on it, and it's the right decision. I'm not gonna come back. Okay, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> like I believed you the first time. Um, yeah, I think it was just because it was shocking. Remember we were talking about like how, yeah. yeah, but it's like, well, what does he really have to prove at this point? I guess he just nipped it in the bud type thing. Yeah, well, and then he had that whole um, ban for two years, which he could have fought, and he didn't. That, that fucked him so bad. Yeah, but he didn't fight it, so he was already content with really doing whatever he was doing for two years. And then he just had a kid, so it makes sense. Like, he really wasn't in it. And he wasn't in that fight with, was it Alexander? Uh, yeah. Bukowski? Yeah. Well, he won the first round. Remember, he, he he dropped him, and then in the second round, he got beat the fuck up. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. Yeah, so thanks, oh, man. Yeah, good for Mendes, man. Just, I mean, I, I think he means it. Because, uh, well, leading into the next headline, <laughs> Jefferson didn't mean it. It's been, what, two weeks since he fought? <sighs> Why, man? It's It's been talked about more than once that he may retire, right? It, there are rumors flying around before this. I think Gus is just really emotional, man. I mean, I don't blame him for crying after Rumble knocked him out. I think most people would, even fighters. But, um, you know, he wanted to retire then. I think he wanted to retire after the DC fight. I just think he's one of those guys, like, if if he's not seeing success, he thinks there's something wrong. So maybe that's his name about his mindset. Maybe that shows that he's kind of a maybe a narcissist or he expects too much or I, I don't know. But it is really weird to just go back and forth. Because like, he's still – he's John Jones age. He's like 31. Yeah, and John Jones was recently talking about him, I believe. I think it was him. I was like, why hang it up? You still have, you know, you're only 31. And he can go up to heavyweight, too. It's like, I mean, I'm not saying he'll be a champion or anything, but, like, why not? Give it a shot. You're not going to be John Jones. All Give right. it a shot. I mean, that's why. Maybe he heard that. He's like, maybe I have a chance. He's still, if he were to go up to heavyweight, he'd be way faster. He's still got a lot of power. He can knock dudes out, and he'll be faster than him. So, yeah, I don't know. He's just saying that, oh, I just got that feeling. I got that tingling in my hands or something like that. But I don't know. I don't know what that means. I don't I don't know what to make of that. But, you know, there's that dichotomy. Mendez is saying, I'm good. I'm done. And Gus is like, maybe. We'll see. I don't what know. What the hell, man? He's 31. Tashir is still in it, man. He's like, fuck it. I'm, I'm how old? 41? Yeah, you're just, you got to think for the older guys, Reen. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> And other unbelievable fucking face palm worthy news. Tito Ortiz is gonna fight Alberto Del Rio. Yes, the boss of Combate Americas in a Combate card. No date, no venue, nothing. They're saying I think in Spain 
at the end of the year. He's going to be at 210 pounds. Rain, you know, Alberto Dorio. I know I'm Mexican, but you know more about him than me. Yeah, I don't think he's fought since 2011. He used to be a wrestler in the WWE. I, I just don't get it. He's Why? I heard that he's getting his cardio back and you know he's he's been working out and he's feeling good and he's he has all his friends helping him out in the industry you know so he's feeling really good about it Del Rio yeah I mean I, I seen him at the combate card that I covered I mean he looks like he's fit he definitely doesn't look like a like a chubby guy or anything but yeah I mean fighting is a whole different thing and yeah Ortiz is not the greatest but He's got miles and years of experience on him. So, but the thing is, like Ortiz, Ortiz is fighting his boss, man. I know that's kind of weird to think about, but he is, and I guess it shouldn't matter too much because I, I don't think Ortiz is fi- going to fight for Combate forever. I don't think he has a problem with beating the shit out of Alberto, Alberto, Alberto del Rio. I have to say it with a Mexican accent to say it right, but I just. Send some fuckery because Alberto Del Rio is also a Mexican. Is also a Mexican, yeah, <laughs> a Mexican wrestler. He, he's a pro wrestler, you know. And there's this, that rumor that you know he fought Krokop back in Pride and that he took a dive in that fight. And it's like shit like that just kind of sets off red flags. That's so strange. I mean, they don't need to do this. But is already a name. Yeah, but it's ratings. This is going to get, you know, casual MMA fans. It really, I mean, it's not going to make millions and millions of dollars, but somebody hears about it, it's like, what? Tito's fighting? Because they still know Tito. Tito. And if you're a WWE fan and you hear about this, you're going to tune in for that too. So That's true. Yeah. He used to be engaged to Paige. I heard. She's a British chick, right? Yeah. She did that movie, right? That Fighting With My Family. Well, it's about her, right? Yep. Yeah. They had, a, they had a her, rocky relationship. I may be speaking out of turn here. It sounds like you know something that, you know, way more than me. Did he hit her? Yes. Uh, yeah, I think so. That's the rumor or <laughs> yeah, is that confirmed? Alleged, allegedly. Okay, I heard something like that. I was like, okay, I don't. And I, I, I think I've seen Paige once. She's like a tiny girl, right? She's like five one or something. Yeah, she's tiny, dude. Yeah, that's. I've seen I brought to dinner in real life and uh He's pretty fucking tall, he's man. Big, he's a big dude. man. Yeah. He's a big fucking guy. Yeah. Damn. Oh man, that's uh that that makes me weird now. That was like I was like five feet from the dude. Oh, okay. Hope that's not true, but moving on. Bellator announced Bellator two twenty eight. It's gonna take place at the forum at the end of September. The main event, I guess is the featherweight tournament is going to start it's going to start with uh patricia P- pitbull versus juan archuleta cool. and yeah that's the main event and then um since it's it's bellator has been doing these uh tournaments the champion their belt is up every single fight so this is a actual title fight scheduled for five rounds the winner will advance in the tournament and the co-main is the rematch between gegard musasi and leota machida damn dude that's so crazy man they just both fought too. Yeah, yeah. But, well, it's, you know, it's funny because I now, I just now realized, I'm like, why is this the co main event? I was getting where I was like, oh shit, Musasi's not the champion anymore. Right. I guess I'm just surprised that I, I was sure that they were going to do the rematch. Because even Lovato was like, yeah, it's cool. You know, I will do a rematch. But, mm. yeah, dude, wait, they just fought in June, right? Yes. And they're going to have a fight in. September. Yes. Damn, that's quick. Yeah. Well, but you know, Gegard. Machida didn't take no damage. Uh-uh. Sassi, t- I mean, five round fight hard, but he didn't yeah. really get beat up. Just out grappled. Yeah, interesting. Okay. Yeah, it's gonna be at the forum though. It's gonna be in Inglewood, so I'm definitely gonna try to attend. And I'm definitely gonna, if I don't attend, I'll try and do the weigh-ins and the whole deal. I want to try and get out a little bit more, especially with these events. So. Yeah, just like Reen might be there Friday, I might be there in September as well. So let's get into the matchup segment. And uh, they announced, uh, I first heard it on Saturday. I don't know if there was any news beforehand, but Paul Felder and Edson Barboza are going to rematch 
at 242, UFC 242 in Abu Dhabi. What do you think about this one, Rin? Damn, dude. Part two. I like do you it. Remember, do you remember the first fight? No, I have to watch it again, but it's the Comey? That's what I heard, yeah. I mean, you know, it's still a ways away, and then maybe they change it. Maybe it's just a rumor. Damn, it's been a while, right? The first one. I gotta look it up. It's been I think it's been a good three or four years. Damn. But I will never forget that fight because Paul Felder, it's not just that he has an a iron chin, as you know we've seen in his recent fights, and he's tough as hell. Paul Felder may be even tougher than Tiago Santos because he took a full-fledged wheel kick to the dick by Edson Barboza in that fight. And he didn't cry. <laughs> Holy he shit. was in utter agony. He took a minute or two. I'm like, this is one of those first fights. It's rare. You see someone get hit, and then I was like, ah, oh, yeah, he's going to take five minutes. That never happens. When I saw that, I'm like, dude, just call the fight. Don't even – why are you bothering with the time? You're done. Just take the DQ. But he took like a minute and a half. A minute later, he was good to go. What a man. Redheads. Well, they got no souls, so probably don't feel <laughs> pain either. Dude, damn it. It'll be four years, right? Yeah. Paul Felder, a.k.a. also the the the, the toughest uh, the toughest theater student of all time. He got his major in theater, for those that don't know. Nobody believes that when they hear it. It's so funny. I'm like, huh? Yeah, it's true. He's a, he's a theater guy. Okay. Yeah. I'll fuck you up, though. <laughs> <laughs> another news, another matchup. Um, maybe you'll go to this one, Rain. You know, I know we've been iffy about the, the fights, and I said I want to go to this one, too. But the San Francisco card, uh, October 12th, ESPN Plus card, they got another edition. Uh, and I don't think they announced this as the co-main, but it would make sense if it is. Cub Swanson, SoCal guy, is taking on Kron Gracie. Which I believe Con Grace is also a SoCal guy, but I think he trains up there with Gil and the Diaz and all them. So yeah. Yeah, that's cool, man. I like Wait, it. Who you got? Shit, with just man, I love Cub, but just the way he's been on decline lately. Yeah, but Kron, like he's not a striker. He could get fucked up. Remember Duho Choi? I know it's a while ago, but I, I, I. I Knee, knee jerk reaction. I'm just gonna go with Cub. I think he can put a whooping on him. Unless Kron just gets a hold of you and submits you, and that's it. Well, the Brian Ortega fight does kind of stick out, yeah. So, but Brian can also box. So, I mean, that's probably that. But yeah, yeah it's, and also two yeah. lives too, I guess. But what? Yeah, moving on. Um, <laughs> another ESPN Plus card, Mexico City. So, of course, you know, Alessa Grasso got to be on it. She's going to fight Carla Esparza. Uh, I think this is a good test for her. I think this is the perfect fight. We saw how improved her boxing was against uh, Kovalkovic. And Esparza is still that, you know, smothering grappler. So, if she could pass this test, you know, I think she's going to move on to bigger and better things. I'm, of course, going to go Grasso. I don't like Esparza. I never have. So, too, team man. Grasso all the way. <laughs> Yeah, I hope she fucks her up, man. Yeah, I think I hope so too. <laughs> and for those that have been seen, haven't seen Grasso much and think that she's like not really powerful, I urge you to go to UFC Fight Pass and watch her fight against Jody Escabel. She fucking cut that girl's face in half, man. That was a bloody ass fight. Dude, she's so cute. Yeah, yeah. The she's a killer. Just bleeds. Future wife. I was gonna have that bana video with her. That's his dream. He, he I, I tweeted oh, to him once and he replied that she is the Donna to his Richie because he's that Mexican. He has to go with the La Bamba reference. But, uh, gotcha. <laughs> yeah, he nice. loves the girl. Uh, that's, uh, those are the matchups. Another, another news, just a, a quick aside. Um, Ryzen is announcing a new event, I believe. Yes, Ryzen 18. And it's taking place on August 18th. And some of the fights that have been announced, John Wayne Parr uh, is going to have a kickboxing match on that card. Fucking insane, man. Yeah. He's still yeah. doing the thing, man. It's so crazy. How old is he now? It's like wow, fucking gotta, 50, right? I got to look it up, man. Yeah. Insane. 43. Yeah. 
Oh yeah, the old Vang stuff. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure you're like, yep. 132 kickboxing fights. Yeah. Oh yeah. good lord, man. He's a madman. Yeah. Him. Uh, another fight. Oh, I don't know. How can I cannot find? Oh, okay. Well, we'll skip past that in a second. But uh, show favorite Alicia Sabatella. She's going to Japan. She's going to fight Kana Asakura. Um, can you say that for me again, Rain, so I can say it with the proper accent? Like Kana Asa, Kana Asakura. Kana Asakura. Okay, That's more or less there. Nope, you're close. <laughs> um, Kana Kana is a is a legit. Uh, she fought uh, Rising Sixteen. She had, she had a dominant win. I forget her name, but she was basically next in line for that title against against Jin Frey and Yamasaki. Hamasaki. Yeah, Yaka Hamasaki. Uh, but yeah, let's just step in and Alicia. Why do I keep calling her Alicia? Sorry. It's the way I read it. But um, yeah, she's stepping in. It's going to be interesting because Kana's a pretty good grappler. I want to see if uh, I want to see how she, Alicia's going to come back from that loss to Vivian Pereira because she just basically got outboxed. So I hope she worked on her boxing and kept at it with the wrestling. Let's we'll see what she could do with this girl. And then Kyoji Horiguchi is also on the card. Um, I cannot find his opponent. I don't know what happened to it. I saw the name and it is now gone. I don't know what happened to my notes. But it's a non-title fight. Why? I, I don't know. That's I don't weird. Know. Well, Bellator used to do this back in the day too. Like the champions that always fight the tournament winner, but every once in a while they'd have just like a you know, like a setup fight. But like he has fight. both belts. Yeah, I don't. I still don't know what's happening with Baltar, but fuck Darian Caldwell. He deserves everything he took from him. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> and, um, you know, we're talking so much about Masvidal. I saw a video. You know that Masvidal, this is what I was saying that I, I hope he, he coaches one day. You know that he says that Kyoji is the best guy at ATT? I saw that, yeah. He was talking to Dan Hardy. Yeah, and he was like, no bullshit, man. You know, and it's like, especially talking to a dude like Dan, like, you know, Dan's all about it, you know, like, you don't bullshit that dude. He knows what's up, and he's like, really? He's like, there's nobody that can beat that dude. He's like, damn. And he's all like, would you, you know, how would you, how would he do against DJ now? It's like, I'd put money, you know, he's like, I'm very confident he'd win. Like, damn, dude. Wow, dude, that's crazy. Yeah, so, anytime Kyoji fights, I'm in. Oh, man. That does it for that, though. Um, one last MMA segment. So we're recording this on Thursday. It's July 11th, technically July 11th. And um, uh, two anniversaries. It is the 10-year anniversary of UFC 100, and it is the four-year anniversary of UFC 189. So talking on those two cards, Rene, which one sticks out to you most? And what's, like, your memory? When, when you hear those cards, what sticks out to you? 189 with Robbie. Yeah, and Rory is the one that sticks out the most. You know my thoughts on that one. <laughs> yeah, but also like Brandon Thatch, that name sticks out too. Like, what happened to that dude? I think that was his last fight, right? He got fucked up by Gunner, and I think that was yeah. it. Insane. I think he had one more fight after that against like a UFC newbie, and he got choked out again. And God yeah. damn, UFC one eighty nine. How long ago is that? Why does it feel like it's been forever? Four years. Oh that my god, the, it's been four years. That was the introduction of the uniforms of Usada. Oh, that's uh, right. Yeah. We've had four years of that bullshit. Yes, we have. Holy shit, man. I the, didn't know it was that long. The intros, the still without a doubt, I don't give a fuck how much you hate Conor McGregor. That entrance at UFC one one eighty nine is one of the best things you've ever seen in your life. Yeah, it was that's pretty insane. Tonight. Yeah, even with crazy ass Sinead O'Connor singing it, but it was beautiful. That was um, a crazy card. I don't know if they'll ever do that again, but man, that shit was dope. That that fight brought a lot of new fans. All these casuals that all y'all hate, like on MMA Twitter, they all came because of this card. Basically, it's either this or like the Ronda Holly fight. Basically, oh yeah, it, it, all, it all happened here. You know, I think it is more this one. Yeah, yeah. You see, when I mean, I think. I don't know if he's not what he wants, what he was here, but Tomas Almeida knocking out Brad Pickett with that flying knee. Oh, shit, that's right. Yeah, that's what sticks out to me. Yeah. Damn. That was fucking nuts. 
one of the best flying knees maybe before right. uh, Jorge Masvidal. Fuck, I forgot about that. I don't gotta go watch that entire card again. It was good. Jeremy Still the best, the best pay per view card ever. Like as far as main card, best pay per view card ever. Yeah. Ever. Jer- Jeremy Stevens killed Dennis Bermudez. Killed, yep. Right? With a, a knee that looked like he took an elevator going up. Yep. Yep. Insane. Yep. And then UFC 100 also happened. Um, I think Hendo, Hendo, and you know Hendo knocking out Bisping. That was fucking nuts. That's right. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah, that one. UFC 100 is one of those cards. I know everyone talks about, but it's one of those cards I don't talk about that much because there was a family tragedy that happened. I didn't watch UFC 100 live. I watched it like on a replay, like a month later, like on Spike. And as I was watching it, I got terrible, terrible news uh, from, you know, from my family. So it's weird. Every time I think of that card, I think of, I think of that. Aww. But it's funny because I have a tattoo of a said family member that, that passed. But I should remember it every day, and I do. But nothing like that card. It like it. It always has that connotation to me for some reason. But there's, I have like one or two other UFC cards like that too. So. When you watch as much fights as we do, I think it's going to happen to you at one point or another. I think I was too drunk with this car. <laughs> this is UFC 100 is actually one of the big reasons why I got into the sport. Uh, Machida versus Rashad, which happened like two months before that. I That was the one I really paid attention to. But then after UFC 100, I, I watched like almost every pay-per-view. So that's kind of the one that got me hooked. And it wasn't Brock. It was Machida. That was Machida. The, that was the one thing that I'm like, damn, karate? Karate could win in this shit? They're not just brawlers? <laughs> that tripped me out, man. Huh. God damn. 2009. Yeah. I'm a 10-year veteran at this shit at this point now, man. That's insane. It's been that long. I feel old. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> moving on from MMA stuff, we're going to get it quickly into the tweet of the week. And as I said... I'm pissed off at MMA Twitter, so it ain't none of y'all. I just came across this tweet, and I thought it was hilarious. Guy's name's Bobby, handles at Grandpa. Yeah, just Grandpa. I don't know how he got that handle, but it's awesome. At Grandpa, he tweeted, whoever invented air conditioning prob got hella bitches. It's hot as fuck right now, so that I just related to that. <laughs> <laughs> fuck, man, I wonder. Probably did. Shit, man. Yeah, he 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 kind of invented a miracle, it's, right? He invented heaven on earth in a way. Thank God, man. Yeah, and as I've said, I'd, I've only met one girl in my life who's okay with heat, and she also smoked crystal meth. So, what I'm saying, boys, do not or ladies, do not trust women who like the heat. It's not unless they're from like Brazil or Africa or something, then it makes sense. But other than that, yeah, that that sounds bad. I don't trust them. <laughs> There's a devil. Yeah. Who the fuck likes the heat? What the hell is wrong with you? Absolutely nutty, fucking quacks, fucking crazy ass women. But yeah, that was that was a long time ago. I won't I won't forget that girl. She was fucking nuts. Anyway, <laughs> let's let's get into our news story of the week. Headline is. Man caught driving stolen car filled with radioactive uranium, rattlesnake, whiskey, Guthrie police say. So this happened in Oklahoma. And if you look at the mugshot of this guy, he looks like he lives in Oklahoma. And um, yeah, so here's how it starts. Guthrie police had quite the surprise when they pulled over a car with an expired tag. Car turned out to be stolen, and police said they found a canister of radioactive uranium, a rattlesnake, and an open bottle of Kentucky Deluxe whiskey. He also had a gun, too. I don't know why it doesn't say that more, but I guess when you have uranium, that's the least of your problems. What the fuck? It's so odd that he had all those pieces. Yeah. The the order of events, right? What came first? How did he get that? Yeah. Did he steal the car first? Did he have a rattlesnake? Did he pick it up from his house? Did he rob a fucking pet store? I don't get it. Was he holding it for a friend? And they're all deadly. Yeah. They're all nothing to fuck with. Like, why do you have all these items? What what were what was your plan? What were you gonna do? I have so many questions, man. Like 
<laughs> what the fuck? I, I mean, I'm almost, I'm almost speechless. Yeah, because to me, I'm just like, look, I'm one of these people that will call out police brutality. I'm not a fan of that shit. I'm not one of those that, you know, cops have a, a tough job and let them do whatever they want type <laughs> shit. But if I was a cop and I pulled over a guy and I come to find out that there was uranium within 10 feet of me, I'm beating the fuck out of that guy. I'm sorry. I know I'm gonna get I'm gonna get let off with fucking suspension and pay. I'll be good. But fuck that guy. You don't have uranium. You wanna give yourself cancer? Go ahead. But what the fuck? Are you, how much time is he gonna do? How do you charge somebody? Charging somebody with like unlawful with an unlawful weapon? That's one thing. But uranium? What the fuck do you even charge that as? I I don't get it. I was he high? Are you on something? Like I, I don't know, man. Yeah, so this guy, 41-year-old Stephen Jennings, that's his name, and this is what Jennings has been charged with a felony count of possession of a stolen vehicle and misdemeanor counts of transporting an open container of liquor, operating a motor vehicle with suspended driver's license, and failure to carry security verification form. But it does not say anything about the, the uranium. I don't know how that's not a fucking God damn life it. sentence. Right? Was he trying to create a bomb with everything? He had a woman with him, too. Um, yeah, uh, she was charged with possession of a firearm and former, oh, after a former felony conviction. So I don't know. She also looks kind of crazy. What the fuck is going on in Oklahoma? As I said, it's that Southwest. Well, Oklahoma is even weirder because it seems like half the people in Oklahoma are, are, are Indian. They're, they're Native American, even, even the white people, man. Actually, it's fun. I don't know if you saw, did you see this guy on, on 239? I know we're done with UFC, but. There's this guy, Chance Rencounter. He fought on the undercard. Oh, I heard about him. Well, it's funny because you look at him. He's a white boy. Fucking dirty blonde hair. Kind of, you know, handsome looking white boy. And Mm -hmm. he's Native American. He's Osage. He's from the Osage Nation. And he's from Oklahoma. Yeah, they're fucking wild down there, man. But I don't know what this dude was thinking. I'm glad they caught him. I hope he stays in jail. And um, wherever he found that uranium from... Please do something better than what the government does of just digging a hole and burying it. Find some way to fucking get rid of that shit. Weird, man. I'm not going to Oklahoma. If you just randomly carry that shit, like, what the fuck? Yeah, people are wild. They're probably all crystal now. It's probably peyote, man. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. Of, as I said, a lot of Native Americans down there, but ayahuasca shit. Nah, that that's Peru. That's probably oh, okay. well. There's that show in Vice, ayahuasca, Kentucky ayahuasca. The hillbillies are getting into it now too. So yeah, I mean, wow. <laughs> but uh, yeah, don't 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 get your hands on uranium, kids. Remember, it's like that Chappelle show skit about Black Bush. Remember the the yellow cake uranium? How he had the napkin around it. Like, <laughs> that's some dangerous shit, man. Be careful with it. That oh is. My- Maybe my second favorite Chappelle show skit. If you guys haven't seen it, I don't know. If you're listening to the show, you should be watching Chappelle show. But if you haven't, go watch it. It's amazing. Man, I miss that fucking entire. He should have came out with another one, but we'll never, never, we'll never see it again. We had to yeah. just accept for what we had. Yeah, remember the good, a good old days. Yep. Yeah. yeah. But that's going to do it for us tonight. Thank you for sticking with us for this long ass episode. But 239 was worth it. Uh, Sacram- UFC Sacramento's happening this card. Maybe Reen goes down, get some pictures, videos for weigh-ins, get it on the social media. Speaking of social media, that's where you can follow the show, at iFox with Juice, Twitter and Instagram. I'm at Juice underscore MMA. Reen. <laughs> Just kidding. Fox with you on Twitter and Instagram. Yeah, and, and and if she does go, as I said, we'll be keeping you posted. I'll be retweeting stuff. I'm sure Reen will be retweeting stuff as well. And uh, yeah, thank you guys for listening. Yeah, sorry for that little hiccup. I was thinking about Holly again. <laughs> I was going to make fun of her, but I'll keep my mouth shut. Don't worry, we'll make fun of her. Off her. No, we won't make fun of her. I'm going to stick <laughs> up her. Holly, keep your head up, girl. <laughs> I'm so Wait, mean, man. <laughs> I'm, here. I'm here for you. Don't don't listen to this woman. She's bad. <laughs> but thank you guys for listening. We'll catch you guys next week. Right. See ya.